the dope has been burning too hot. Adam Curry, John C. Devore. It's Sunday, April 28th, 2019. This is your award-winning Kipo Nation Media Assassination Episode 1133. This is No Agenda. Fighting the Bobcats and broadcasting live from the frontier of Austin, Texas, capital of the drone star state. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where I'm awaiting the Zephyr, I'm John C. Devorak. It's Craig Vaughn and Buzzkill. In the morning. It's the numbers, man. It's, a, it's 1133. It's hard. Everything is tough. 1133, <laughs> lucky numbers. Yeah, massively lucky numbers. With a triple redo of the open of the show. You know, that's all it can mean is we're lucky. A lucky, triple. lucky, lucky. It was. It was. A treble. It's true. You. Oh, please. I got a great end of show clip. <clears throat> I know. It's Pretty getting on my nerves, too. Now we're hearing it everywhere. But ha- have you heard the... Bill Maher had... It, 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 it's, it's not true. Oh, but did you hear the song? The whole mix? The whole song? No, I don't uh, want to hear it. You want to hear it now? No, pl- you can play it at the end of the show. Yeah, Exactly. So I thought, you want to hear it now? I don't want to hear it now. <laughs> well, well, well. We, uh, a big event happened this past weekend. Which in nor- Texas? No, no, in Washington, D.C., which normally we're all over. What might this be that we missed? This would be the annual Washington White House Correspondents Association dinner. Yeah, I got clips. You got clips? Did you watch? I watch. Oh, fantastic. Well, then I think you should, let me just explain. This is oh, it was a total dud. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, for years, I probably ever maybe three or four sh- years into the show, we've been always delighted to watch our favorite channel, C SPAN, when the Washington White House or uh, the White House Correspondence Dinner takes place. Where everyone dresses up and celebrities come and hang out and the president's there and he gets roasted by a comedian. And all of that is over. There's Thank no Thank God. <laughs> there's I only had one clip, and I'm surprised that you have more than one clip. This is something this clips. Is, okay. <laughs> Multiple clips he I has. Have, I have <laughs> Oliver Knox, the guy who heads up yes. the association. <laughs> yeah, I, think grousing. It's, I think it's Olivier. Yeah. Olivia, Olivia. Well, it could be, but Oliver Olivia. is what it looks like on the sheet here. Uh, okay. Uh, Olivier. Yes, Olivier. Oh, thank you, Olivier, is what they say when they bring him up, when they guess. And then I also have Ron Chernow, who was a historian from I don't know what college, but I've heard of him. And he um, was the comedian. Wait a minute. But, I thought they didn't have a comedian. Well, they didn't. Okay. But he's been dropped into that spot. <laughs> oh, and he had to do the... The comedic stuff, the comedic yeah, segments. So he went up there to just pretty much bomb one joke after another. I'll ring the bell. I don't have much of his stuff because it's really bad. Mm-hmm. But this was the this was the opening act, and this is Chernow. He's joining me in welcoming Ron Chernow. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Olivier. Olivier, I confess that I was surprised when I received the invitation to speak here tonight. I mean, I knew they weren't approaching me as an international sex symbol, right? Then Olivier told me that they wanted to try boring at this year's dinner. And I said, I said, oh, I can deliver on that big time. Now you're talking my language. So here I am, your 20 minute sedative for the evening. Oh, brother. (laughs) Oh, brother. It goes on. You should have. I, I could have listened to more of that, actually. Oh no, you couldn't. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. You say that, and, but and believe just so me. We, just so we, some of the previous comedians who have roasted the presidents, um, uh, John Stewart, I believe. Yeah. Um, John Oliver. Of course, we last year we had that. Uh, what's her name? Michelle. Michelle, whatever. Her name yes. Is. Wolf. Yeah. Wolf. Michelle. Wolf. 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 Uh, yeah, Stephen Colbert. They had all these different guys. They're all lefties. Um, Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald did a great job. Yeah, I think he did one of the better ones. Yeah, it's because he's more neutral. Mm. So Olivier, Olivier, oh, Olivier, and I have a longer Olivier clip because I think I have a little more. Did, did you? Do you think it's the same clip? Yeah, probably. It's, it's, yes, about uh, Daddy. I don't know anything about Daddy. Okay, well, let's listen to your grousing clip of Olivier Knox. And- that guy- He's the president of the White House Correspondents Association. 
Yeah, he's does, the boss. Does he have any other credentials? Yeah. He, he makes himself sound like he's got all these credentials because yeah. they've been trying – because the whole world's been trying – because he's a journalist, trying to kill him. Oh. So you look into <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yes. You look into this guy, and he's the White House correspondent for Sirius FM. XM. XM. Sorry. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, this, I, I, yeah, he's the White House correspondent for oh, Sirius God. XM. Right. And he has a show. <laughs> that I guess packs him in on Sirius XM. Oh. So this guy, and then you listen to this story, and he just tale of woe, and you you think he was like Dan Rather or something out, well, in, the, out in the field. Well, so if you don't mind then, because it is the same clip, I'm going to play what preceded that clip because I thought it was just kind of funny too because they were honoring not just journalists. Did you see Did you see the whole thing or did you just get a couple clips? No, I just came in late. Ah. So they're honoring journalists and, you know, they give out the scholarships and do all kinds of great things for journalism and the freedom of the press. Yeah. But who is the most celebrated guy there on the dais? The lawyer. A very special thank you to someone <laughs> whose counsel has always steered us in the right direction, but whose particular talents got an unusually robust workout this year. Our lawyer, George Lehner. You should have seen the guy. He's like, you know, said, right, everybody, it's me. I'm the lawyer. <laughs> Attorney at law. I, I take care of you. When the White House stripped Jim Acosta of his credentials, I did the easy work of pointing out that no president should get to pick and choose who covers him, while George did the hard work of drafting and filing our amicus brief in support of CNN. Yes, you supported CNN. Yes. It was so great that Sirius XM supported CNN with their amicus brief. And that gets us in an admittedly roundabout way to this president. I don't think it was so admittedly roundabout. I think you kind of purposely did that. Uh, I don't want to dwell on the president. This is not his dinner. It is ours. And it should stay yeah. ours. <laughs> yes, good idea. <laughs> but I do want to say this. In nearly 23 years as a reporter, I've been physically assaulted by Republicans and Democrats spat on, shoved, had crap thrown at me. I've been told by senior administration officials of both major parties that I will never work in Washington again. And there was a brief moment in Afghanistan when I thought a soldier not quite old enough to shave would shoot me dead for the crime of taking a picture inside the presidential palace. And yet, I still separate my career into the period before February of 2017 and what came afterwards. Wait a minute. Do, do we have a wiki page on this guy? Because I want to see what actually separated his so-called career. Uh, I found a bio. I think maybe, maybe yeah, I think there was a wiki page. He's got to have a wiki page. So yeah. he separates his career the minute President Trump became president. Here he is. No, that's the, no, I, he doesn't have a wiki page. No, he's not that important. Is he? I mean, the, the way he d describes himself of being spat on and, and kicked and beaten and t told by both parties he'll never work again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe his boss this, this, said this that is, to him. From this what is what funny. The White House Correspondents Association website throws mm -hmm. a certificate error. Nah. A certificate out of date. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, we have we have these issues too, but we're not yeah, ho know, holier we're not, than thou. We're podcasters. We're podcasters. So please, here, Sirius XM. Oh, oh, John. Of course. No. What am I? He came from Sirius. He came to Sirius XM from. Yahoo News. <laughs> uh, okay. I missed that. No, but before that, he did 15 years of reporting for AFP, in which he covered the George Bush administration. The impeachment and acquittal of, pre acquittal? Oh, yes, of President Bill Clinton and the 2000 election. Well, he's uniquely qualified then to, to be in this spot. He knows everything. All right, let's see. Dave would shoot me dead for the crime of taking a picture inside the presidential palace. And yet, I still separate my career into the period before February of 2017 and what came afterwards. And that's because February 2017 is when the President of the United States called us the enemies of the people. Yeah, I don't think that's exactly you what know, he said. This is the part that gets, you know, this is the guy, and now this is the part we have to really look at. And that's the part that got me to, which is, he never said this. He said fake news is the enemy of the people. And it, 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 actually, now, if you think you're fake news, yeah, 
And so he obviously either thinks he's fake news yeah. or he has the quote wrong. Well, he has the quote wrong in two ways because he says enemies of the people inferring that every journalist in the building is an enemy. And, and that's what he's been implying. And, it, and when he says February 17th, I think, uh, that is the first time Trump said it. And it's the first time that uh, – well, it was before he qualified it by actually saying CNN is fake news. So this was just the fake news media is the enemy of the people has now translated to the president of the entire group of people who report on the president – to this period before February of 2017 and what came afterwards. And that's because February 2017 is when the president of the United States called us the enemies of the people. A few days later, <laughs> I love the crowd. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, I remember that was a dark day. I kind of separate my career from that as well. Mm -hmm. February 2017 is when the president of the United States called us the enemies of the people. Oh. A few days later, I was driving my then 11-year-old son somewhere, probably soccer practice, when he burst into tears and asked me, is Donald Trump going to put you in prison? At the end of a family trip to Mexico, he mused that if the president tried to keep me out of the country, quote, at least Uncle Josh is a good lawyer and he'll get you home. Hey, Uncle Josh. Uh, I've had to tell my family not to touch packages on our stoop. My name is on a statement criticizing the president for celebrating a congressman's criminal assault on a reporter. You know... Uh, everything about the thing that bothers me is about the don't don't touch the packages, and that's really insinuating something very dark and mean. And by the way, I don't do it either. <laughs> I send it to the PO box or let the postal employees handle my packages first. But it, you know, that, you, he never did that well, before. Well, here's the other part: what kind of dinner? table conversation are they having where their 11 year old would ask the question is donald trump going to throw you in jail i think what kind of dinner table conversation would lead your own 11 year old to say something I like thought, that, i thought it was ludicrous i thought it was on its way to soccer practice yeah it was on the way to soccer practice let's throw that in just to make sure we that the kid and our family likes european sports <laughs> And his shoes, globalist American. It was, wasn't on the way to baseball practice. If it was on the way to baseball practice, this never would have happened. You're so right. What a virtue signal that is. Oh, you nailed it. <laughs> uh, I've had to tell my family not to touch packages on our stoop. My name is on a statement criticizing the president for celebrating a congressman's criminal assault on a reporter. I've had death threats, including one this week. Too many of us have. It shouldn't need to be said in a room full of people who understand the power of words, but fake news and enemies of the people are not pet names, punchlines, or presidential. Yes. Words hurt. Words are violence. And we should reject politically expedient assaults on the men and women whose hard work helps make it possible to hold the powerful to account. Oh, yes. Well, here's, the, here's what I missed during the uh, correspondence dinner. Now, granted, it is the White House Correspondence Association, and I, you know, it's it's all on C-SPAN. There's no commercial interruptions. I may have missed it, but I really didn't see anyone stand up and say, "People, we have less than twelve years. Think of Greta. We have to bond together to stop the scourge of global warming." This I did not hear on the. Uh, and during the entire celebration, I, I was very disturbed by that. I think that the, the, they were remiss. I mean, what an what, opportunity. What kind of good liberals are they not to bring this well, up? Uh, journalists. I mean, when when Greta Thornburg goes out and speaks, as she did recently to European Is it Parliament. Thornburg or Thunberg? Oh, could be Thunberg. Yeah. Could be Thunberg. When when she when she goes out and speaks and politicians and they report on it and it's, you know everyone agrees and there's lots of heads bobbing but when it comes down to hey we really have a problem with this you know the earth is going our children where, where was that push last night I, or yeah last uh, last yeah last night where was the push I just didn't see it must be me you must have missed it <laughs> if someone saw it please let me know. So we uh I don't even think there was a mention of global warming. No, this is this is my point. Uh, we were actually up in uh, uh College Station. 
uh, ah. Friday, Friday night. Yeah, there was a you know big Ronald McDonald House uh, a charity event, which is so different from Austin. The people, are, yeah, I mean, this is George Bush country. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, his library is right there, and uh, that was it. Was good. It was just amazing. It's like all the women kind of des- uh, dressed like Dallas women. You know what I mean? Yeah, most of Texas dresses like Dallas women. Most of the the only places that that's kind of not the case in my experience is Austin mm-hmm. and Houston to some extent, but Houston yeah. Tonians dr- right. don't dress like Austin people either. So what they had at this event, the Starlight Affair, is they had five chefs, five local chefs, and they all made a you know their signature dish right there, and you could it's kind of like buffet style. You go up and get some. So they had the Mad Tacos, and there was this one guy, Chef Dodd. And he made uh, this uh, tomato salad. And it was, none of that is, would normally be important for the show, except when I said, hey, this vinaigrette is good. What did you make it from? He says, the base is sorghum. <laughs> and I went, hi, hey, I know what that is. <laughs> I said, what? How did you come to use that? He says, oh, my grandma's recipe. He said, I guess he emulsifies it and he has to, you know, pound it and then it has to get in you know add some oily stuff to it and i don't know it takes a while for him to do it uh, have i you, have no idea what you're talking about is it the salad dressing it's or the is dressing it just yes just the dr- chunks the, of sorghum no the there, no or? the vinaigrette the vinaigrette dressing it was, was com- sorghum based dressing? sorghum based dressing well, and you didn't get the recipe well, I asked him, and he said, "Well, you know, I emulsify. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it back to you." Did he, no, I said, "Excuse me, chef. Can I have your grandma's secret recipe to steal and take to Austin? Enemy, yeah. enemy of Aggieland. Exactly <laughs> enemy of Aggieland. No, I did not. I did not even think of that. <laughs> but we should figure that out. I've never heard of this. I don't think I've I, never heard of. I don't it think either. I've ever even had sorghum heard in my it. life." Oh, uh, we, yeah, we have sorghum. We have some sorghum flour. You can use do a lot of things with that. No, I know, but I have not had it. We've only talked about it on the show. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Okay. So just wanted to throw this that out our there. Next, uh, for the next year, we'll be working on a sorghum salad dressing. <laughs> I'll make some. some yes. It's got to be in the public domain. I mean, grandmas don't just dream. She was, she's not a chemist, you know, in a lab with test tubes and Bunsen burners. I asked, grandma is no longer with us, unfortunately. I said, I was like, let me rouse the grandma. And, hey, man, is your grandma still around? <laughs> Where she live? I'm going to get some recipes from it's her. It's probably in some JV, one of those uh, junior chamber of commerce uh, cookbooks that are all over oh, the could South. Be. Could be. If anybody out there has heard of anything using sorghum as a base for a salad dressing, Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're probably from the South. It sounds like a Southern thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, please let us know. Okay, one more about food, just because I thought it was interesting. We're, okay. we're doing the wedding stuff, the uh, you know, every place cards, the menus, and you have a choice. You could have beef or fish. You could have the, uh, the ribs or the salmon. And as we're going through this last night, checking the list and you know, doing all, most of this, Tina is fantastic. She's doing all of the work. Uh, I come to the conclusion that based upon a person that I know, I can, with 99% accuracy, can predict whether they want beef or fish. And I, and I just wonder, if, why is that? Why, why, are we, I why think can you, you predict this? Yeah, why can every, I think you can predict from you know, anyone you know. For instance, if I say, uh, Andrew Horowitz, what's he have, beef or fish? He's having beef. Now, how about uh, Jill, his wife? She probably have fish. Exactly. So how do we know this? It's not just women. It's mostly just women. No, not true. <laughs> not true. How about, um, well, the former New York banker? Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. I don't know him well enough to say he could be a fish guy for all I know. No, he's a beef guy. His wife. Oh, good for him. Fish, what, fish what, gal. Yeah, fish. Fish gal. All right. Surprising, Sir Jean. Like, Sir Jean. Uh, I have no idea, but you're, you're doing it surprising. It means he picked fish. Yes. I, 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 he seems only like a beef guy to me. Some people like fish. See, here's the problem I have with that fish. And, <laughs> with and our, went over wait a minute, with our fish or just any fish? With your fish. Or any fish. Yeah, any fish at one of these events. Okay. I'll, I'll take it away from you guys. Thank you. It's salmon. And it's probably farmed. 
And we already went through that. And I have a guarantee that it's not. Yeah, well, I don't know where you get it then. It has to be hauled too far. Yeah. There's no local salmon in the Texas area. Yeah, right here in the in Lake Austin, Town Lake. There's salmon all over the place. Oh, no, that's yeah, carp. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's carp from Lake Austin. Carp. That's, if you serve carp, <laughs> local Texas carp with all its pin bones and the and the greasy meat. What? Yeah, I'll tell that you what would make sense. What is a very tasty treat? Very Texas treat is a catfish. Basket of catfish, fried catfish. That's yeah, I love I'd go catfish. For catfish. If the catfish was on the menu, yeah, I would have picked catfish. Yeah, okay. I would have picked the fish in that regard right. to see how how they're going to prepare it. Unfortunately, I like catfish. I do catfish. Unfortunately, there was a snafu, and you're getting salmon. Sorry. <laughs> All right. The problem with farms, here's another thing people should note. The problem with farm salmon, besides it's, it's a lot of it's genetically engineered salmon, is the it squeaks when you chew on it. It squeak, <laughs> squeak between the teeth. And when you cook it, this white ooze comes the, Yes, out. No, and yes. It, uh, if the farm salmon has the white ooze, not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Not a fan. And it squeaks. It's just not a good product. Mm. Okay. Back to, well, we might as well do, uh, what do we want to do here? We're done with the White House correspondence dinner. Yeah, that's a piece of crap. You, how about Biden? On, on okay, you? yeah, let's do some Biden stuff. You had it, you were all over Biden, I think. You got all kinds of stuff going I on. I got way too many clips. Luckily, there's only one long one. Uh, but Biden comes out and he does his Charlottesville, the hoax that, that, if you listen to Scott Adams recently, he actually thinks that the hoax of, there's good people on both sides. Fine, fine people, fine people. Fine people on both sides. And, and that's going to go away because Scott has has blown the lid off. You know, this, even it, it's- I, it's, it, I just want to respond to that because I just watched that this morning. And yeah. I, I think I had a similar, like, well, because of me and because of Breitbart and some other guy, we've blown this hoax away. It's even in Wikipedia. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, do you not know how this works? Well, he's pretty close to being the last guy on the boat, but uh, when it re- regarding the Charlottesville thing, but he's still wrong. I don't believe that this is going away anytime soon, and Biden is using it as a base. Yeah, and and so he does this. In fact, here he is on Charlottesville. Here's the clip, and and none of the women, all these women, including McCain. Uh, they nobody questions any of it. They just oh yeah, whatever you say goes. We just great because we get to have a, a a better president than this horrible guy that's there now. This is not who we are. There's an American creed. It's about decency, honor, including everyone, leaving no one behind. But the idea to compare these racists and not condemn them and and the neo Nazis and compare them to people who who are genuinely decent Americans coming forward and saying, stop this. I just, I just it was like, I, I don't remember that ever happening in an administration before in a long, in well over 100 years. I mean, it's, uh, so I, I just found myself thinking, and by the way, I, I traveled around the world an awful lot as vice president, and since then I have as well. And the rest of the world, I mean, they look at us like, my God. What happened to America? But, but, but you know, you know you, you, you've spoken about it. <laughs> what's, uh, what's interesting is right after the, you know, we had the opening on Thursday show when Joe had just announced, and we went, that was the first story we did is this is just simply not true. And I got a lot of email from haters. In fact, um, I could have been in the correspondence dinner. People said horrible things to me on email. I have to, I have to open a P.O. box. I have get no mail. Um, and the, the, here's how it goes. Um, yeah, he said, fine people, which means the Unite the Right rally, which is a bunch of uh, a-holes. So they've taken it down, <laughs> taken it down a level from... Oh, yeah, he did kind of say mm, no uh, n- neo-Nazis and uh, white supremacists. Yeah, that, those guys are not the ones. I could condemn them. It was the fine people, and the fine people could have only been the people who were dressed as neo-Nazis. Not anyone else was there. And what? That's, yeah, that's, is, that's how... What that's, logic is this? That's the new talking point. Oh. Yes. So when, Because the only registered rally was Unite the Right, that was white supremacists... 
And by the way, if anyone was there to protest the taking down of the statue of General Lee, that's racist. So that's the story. So that's how they're going to. And and I understand how how people get that in their head and, and roll with it. I can yeah, totally see that. Something to do. I can, I can totally see it. But I can see this going on forever, and and it's just going to be stuck in the mainstream. Yes. And and yep. and Scott's thoughts that the hoax has been exposed, and mm-hmm. if everyone's on it now, it's never going to happen again. No. It's a joke. Yeah, it's, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. It doesn't go away. And, you know, that gives us material for a while, but at the same time, it's just the same thing. As the cor- head of the correspondence dinner comes out and brings up the nonsense about the fake news being the enemy of the people. No, he, he brings it up as the way it's being portrayed, which is the press. The free press of the United States of America is the enemy of the people. That's not what he said, exactly. but okay. Yeah. There's your proof that it does not go away. It does not go away. It's set in stone. Yeah. Let's listen to, uh, let's listen to, uh, this is a view Biden uh, uses phase on being a masher. <laughs> Uh, especially because we're in a different time now. We're in the Me Too mo- uh, uh, movement. But uh, really? are you sorry for what you did? Are you prepared to apologize to those women? Look, here's the deal. I have to be, <laughs> and everybody has to be much more aware Stop of it, the Stop private it. space. He is unbelievable at not apologizing. We've all thought that Trump was a guy who never says I'm sorry. <laughs> this guy yeah. is the worst. And he does the old I'm sorry if you thought. Yeah. That's very- oh, I'm sorry if you thought what I said was offensive. Oh, I'm sorry if what you felt when I grabbed your breasts. I'm sorry that I'm sorry that you felt that that was offensive. This yeah, is the th- way he apologized. This is a very good point you're making, and people can use this in their own relationships as well. Um, yes. Do not say this to your partner. Well, I'm sorry you, you never felt. Say that. I'm sorry you felt I was being shitty to you. It's like. Hmm. That's if you that comes yeah, out of your I'm, mouth, I'm you got to so- catch that shit. That's in not other right. words, is I'm sorry that you made an error. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it's saying. Yeah. I'm not sorry for what I did. Sorry, you. I'm sorry you. D- you got it wrong. <laughs> you got it wrong. I am not sorry for what I did. I am sorry about the way you are. And by the way, it took me a long time to figure that one out myself. Huh? Yeah, no, that doesn't surprise me. Oh, pff, DJ I- and all. Oh yeah, um, that's right. Gadfly Dvorak, give me a break. So here we go with uh, <laughs> here he is. So she asks him outright just to simply apologize, and then when he does, he at one point I think he does one of those one of these kinds of apologies. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I did that. Oh, you know, he did. Kind of, <laughs> the kind of throwaway apology. All right, all the right, sincere <laughs> bullshit apology. Yeah. He does that too. So well, he, I got two clips of this. Let's start that one over. Okay, he sounds like presidential material, though. <laughs> he sounds <laughs> right on the money. Uh, especially because we're in a different time now. We're in the Me Too mo- uh, uh, movement. But uh, are you sorry for what you did? Are you prepared to apologize to those women? Look, here's the deal. I have look, to be, and everybody has to be much look, more aware. Look, hold on a second. Yeah, look, here's the deal. Look, I got hey. this from a, hold on. I got this from a different uh, commentary. Uh, he, he has this, he, he says this, um, look, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Here it is, Biden catchphrase, ISO. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't realize that you were calling for that. <sighs> sorry. Come on, get in there. Look, here's the deal. Yes. So he says, look, here's the deal. He said that in some other some other commentary. In this case, he says, look, here's the deal. And he has a slightly different cadence. But he does this, look, here's the deal. Look, here's the deal. Look, Are for what you deal. did, are you prepared to apologize to those women? Look, here's the deal. I have to be, and everybody has to be much more aware of the private space of men and women. It's not just women, but primarily women. And, uh, and and Joe would be the guy to know since he doesn't discriminate, right? It's like doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, he'll he'll snuggle up to you. So he's 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 t- he's talking his own truth there. I like it. It's not just women, but primarily women. And uh, and I am much more cognizant of that. But I am so like for example, uh, I actually thought in my head when I walked out here. I mean, do I? I know it's, we're friends. It's tricky. 
No, but 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 I have to be aware of it. So I have to, I have to be more cognizant. We all have to be more. A woman or a man has a right to say, particularly a woman, say, no, this is not my space. They don't shouldn't have to say no. Wow. <laughs> Again, no apology. <laughs> no, why? Why bother? He's entertaining like this. He doesn't have to apologize. Oh, he, he's, I've determined by listening. I listened to this whole thing. And yeah. I've determined he's the new John Kerry. He just yaks and yaks oh, and God. yaks. No, I hope not because I remember oh, we instituted we instituted a rule on the show: no more John Kerry clips. That's how boring he is. Oh the, well, this guy's not as boring, but he's just as long winded. Let's mm. go to part two of this clip. This is the. Um, yeah, master two. Thing having to do with harassment or anything else. Right, they have said that, but they have also said we'd like an apology. Well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry if they, what I did in talking to them, trying to console, that in fact they took it a different way, and it's my responsibility to make sure that I bend over backwards to try to understand how not to do that. Now, Nancy Pelosi wants you to say, "I'm sorry that I invaded your space." Sorry, I'm invading your space. I mean, I, I and I, I'm sorry this happened. <laughs> there it is. All right, I'm sorry I invaded your space. Bitch, step back. <laughs> step back. What a dick. <laughs> These hey, guys must. The, the view people must know that they have their hands full with this joker. That's fantastic. Here's no, but example. they love it though. These the women on the view love it. They think it's great. They're all in on Joe. Can I, I just know. you know before you continue? One of our producers, uh, for a number of reasons, received a draft of the invite to the big special reception for Joe uh, out in California yeah. with, with the names of who is, uh, who's in the, the reception committee, the host committee. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to just run them down real quick? I don't recognize yeah, all of them. I want to hear this. Uh, Ambassador uh, Colleen and Brad Bell. I don't know. Uh, Richard Bloom, B-L-U-M. Yeah. Uh, Megan and Peter Chernin. Let me see. We have. He's all San Francisco. Uh, yeah. Socialites. Well, it starts here. Uh, Marilyn and Jeffrey Katzenberg. Uh, Michael Lombardo, Sonny Ward. Michelle and Rob Reiner. Uh, Hollywood's in for him. Eric Schmidt, Google. So this, I think Hollywood's all in for Joe. Chosen old white man, people. Yeah, but you, but you get Rob Reiner in there. You put oh, the yeah. Katzenbergs in there. You got Reiner, Katzenbergs, you got Schmidt. Schmidt. You, you I'm got surprised John Doerr's not on that list, so he must be with someone I th- else. I think John Doerr somehow has fallen out of favor with everybody. There's a lot of negativity about Kleiner Perkins. I'm not so sure John Doerr is, is still en vogue. Well, his money is. Yeah, but he well, he hasn't always used it wisely. Now has he? No, he's been, he put his money behind too many dead <laughs> green horses. stuff. Yeah, Green New Deal. Green That's what stuff, he did. Yeah. yeah. All right, onward with the the view. Good. All right, so here's another one. This is they also demanded he apologize to um, that woman who testified in the Clarence Thomas hearings because he was Anita, the head of Anita the Hill. Judicial Committee. Anita Hill. Anita Hill. And here he is again, no apology. This is by, by, by no apology. More, more no apologies. It was inappropriate that she had what she thought was sufficient, but I said publicly what I said publicly. I'm sorry she was treated the way... Is, is this normal, what I'm hearing? Is this, is this your well, handiwork? Well, I did have it sped up because he went on and on. <laughs> this is the beginning, though. But there was a, but the beginning should have been some, some vocals, so I probably cut it wrong. I pulled a miscut well, error. This is actually cool because people who listen to one and a half, half times speed will be flipping out right now. I wish we could have figured out a better way to get this thing done. All right. Well, that's too bad, John. <laughs> well, let's well done. to say he didn't apologize. <laughs> I'm sure he did not. All right. So let's go to here's when he first came on the show. This is the Biden's opening. I call it opening malarkey. This is a very exciting day for us here. We're making history, we think, because the former vice president and current Democratic candidate for president, Joe Biden, is here for his first live interview since he announced he was running. Yeah, we're excited. (laughs) Yes, we are. I don't know why. They were excited about this. We are. We are very excited. He's going to be out in a minute, but we're going to do a one segment of Hot Topics. 
What is the use of the word exciting? It's exciting. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. You're excited. I'm excited. We're all excited. Is there any synonym that they can use or or are they literally excited? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't yes. like the use of the word excited. Oh, we're excited. We're excited because he's here. It, well, what does it even mean? You're going to act differently. You're going to jump up <laughs> and down. You're going to run in a circle. What is it? I don't get it. Uh, I'll just say it. In this context, it means moist. It's Ferris, because that's what we do. <laughs> yes. Oh, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What were we going to say? That's I said awesome. it's exciting because no matter what happens, this is living history. Yeah. We're all living history together. Yeah. And that is cool. It is I cool. Know. Yeah, on the show. Okay. Oh, so you know, cool. I think it's exciting for so many people because it's like we're it's finally exciting. seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You think? The, we're off Here to we the go. races. There might be a chance to wake up from this three-year-long nightmare. national nightmare. nightmare. <laughs> national nightmare. <laughs> it's true. And, and imagine true. four more years true. of that nightmare. <laughs> no, I can't. No, no, no. no. I'll have to no, take no, no. medication. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. It's they just a, all went off the rails. Yeah, it's kind of a meta, what, what they do there. You know, trying to identify with the audience, make everyone feel comfortable. Oh, yeah, it's just a national nightmare. Just every, oh, yeah, we all know what you're talking about. Yes, we're all in. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of It's kind of a, TV, a talk show TV thing. It's, you yeah. I'm, I'm not, well, so, so far, have, not very spectacular. Why they put Anna Navarro on that show, but it's just, I think they're going to add a Republican before. slant. She's not. She's some Republican. <laughs> she's a Republican okay. strategist. Yes. I just have two more clips, and then they then a, a very funny gaff. Okay. When they close the show, and they right. had to cut it off actually. But let's play this. I thought this uh, this clip is a short one. This is Biden's. What he says here is like makes you cock your head like a dog. <laughs> this is his empathy clip. So, I mean, so people may not know, but you were, your first wife, Melia, and your baby daughter, Naomi, died in 1972 in a car crash. Mm-hmm. Bo, as we know, uh, we were just talking about, uh, died a few years ago. How has that grief shaped you and throughout your life? Well, I tell you what, it's given me an incredible sense, I wish I didn't possess it, of empathy. <laughs> I wish I didn't possess it. I think... <laughs> what does he mean by that? Now, if he was hmm. now, if he was actually a guy with a sense of humor and he made that it was a gaffe, what he meant that he wished he wouldn't have gone through all this. Right. Misery. That he wouldn't have gone through the horrible things. He yeah, went but that's through not what he said. Guy. What he says, he wished he didn't have any empathy. And what to save that he could have said and he didn't followed up with. I wish I didn't have this, but I have an incredible amount of empathy. But then again, if I didn't have it, I'd be a Republican. <laughs> yeah. I unfortunately I don't think Joe has that in him anymore, and I think that only I works. He ever did? Uh, I think he might have had it in cocktail settings back in the day. Which, Maybe. What disturbs me is look. I know lots of people uh, in their seventies, uh, and many of them are completely vibrant and fantastic. Joe's eyes. Oh, he looks like he's half. Yes. Yes, I agree it's with the this. Dark, I was watching dark him. eyes. It's and uh, every once in a while he has the look in his eyes of. Help me. I don't want to do this. Uh, Help I, and I don't I'm know if tired. it's that or, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul, they say. They ju- and I don't I think Joe has a dark soul, but I just don't see anything. I see no sparkle. You know, no, he's, he's, no he's, he's, sparkle. He's a zombie. But here he is. Here he is. Uh, <laughs> it's another way of looking at it. Yeah, he damn decide, zombie. He's a zombie. So here's the way he, he's going to predict. If, he's going to say, I'm going to predict the future. And say, he starts to blather about. The, the great future that the kids get, are going to have. He never mentions that they're all going to die in 12 years, but that's fine. Hmm. And he goes on. But, but what he has to say here is just like he's he doesn't know anything. He is he's like pathetic. Listen to this. There's so much out there. Think of what this next generation is going to have an opportunity to see. We're going to do everything from make fundamental change in curing cancer and Alzheimer's no. and diseases. No, yeah. These, your, your kids are going to be flying across the America in a matter of less than an hour and a half. Oh, have, you know, <laughs> really? Subsonic air, 20,000 miles. I mean, there's so many. Whoa, whoa, stop. <laughs> Subsonic air. I got some subsonic air coming out here. The the things that are changing, <laughs> and you see it every day. More is going to change in the next eight to ten years than and than has happened in the last thirty to forty years. Would you do one term? <laughs> a 
subsonic will be flying on batteries. In fact, on a, on, air. on a single double A battery, you'll be able, our kids will be half, flying an hour and a half. <laughs> Woo! That's a good one. In fact, I'm going to give you a borderline for that one. That was pretty good. <laughs> subsonic. <laughs> Your president, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United he, States of he America. Himself is subsonic. He would be great. He would be the perfect counterweight yeah, to four you years of get Trump. Himself blown up from some gaff. So here's the gaff that it is at the end of the show. They're closing it out. And if you remember back in the day with the problems that Sarah Palin used to have, where she didn't know anything about the, what the paper uh, said. No, she didn't know what paper she, she read. No, she couldn't say Joe Biden. She always said oh, yeah, Joe, Joe Biden. She's, now, I thought she said, can I just call you Joe? Yes, because her problem was she could not say <sighs> Because Mr. of Obama. Biden. Be yeah. Joe Biden. yeah, a lot of people had that. Well, that's because of Obama. <sighs> Hold on so, a second. So I think Obama, O'Biden. Obama, O'Biden. Let me just see. And, let me go, let me go so, into, the, uh, into the archives. Hold on one sec. Didn't we have... We must have oh, people gaffing on old Biden. Okay, yeah, you set, set the clip and I'll look for it. Okay, so here is the clip. They're closing the show out. And Joy Behar, uh, you know, says goodbye to the guest. And this is what ensues. Okay, uh, we have to go in 25 seconds. but And I don't know if you realize this, but we were the very first daytime show to even have on a sitting president, ever have on a sitting president, Barack Obama. So here's my question. Can you, we pencil you in for January 2021? 20, if I'm there, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. First one. I promise. Thank you so much to, pres- to Vice President Obama, uh, Biden. <laughs> Say this, Biden. <laughs> Jabba, huba, jabba, jabba. I love Vice the black President man. Vice President Biden. <laughs> oh, damn! I missed a good one. I should have recorded that one. It was pretty funny. It was a great. <laughs> would have been great. <laughs> we were talking about the vibrancy of Joe. Um, uh, tr- here's Trump. Uh, this is, I think this is, I don't know if this is just about him or about how young, about how young and vibrant Trump is. It's on his way to the helicopter. Well, I think that, uh, I just feel like a young man. I'm so young. I can't believe it. I'm the youngest person. I am a young, vibrant man. <laughs> I look at Joe. I don't know about him. I don't know. <laughs> I would never say anyone's too old, but I know they're all making me look. Very young, both in terms of age and I think in terms of energy. I think you people know that better than anybody. Yes, because you're, you're enemies of the people. <laughs> you know that better than anybody. There is a new so, book. There's a new book, though, that will give Joe some trouble. Um, and I think it's out. Oh, they've been barraging him with trouble. Yeah, listen to this one. A bombshell new book exposes deep financial links between former Vice President Joe Biden's son and the Chinese government. According to an investigation by Clinton Cash author Peter Schweitzer, Biden's son inked a billion dollar deal with a subsidiary of the Bank of China just 10 days after he and his dad visited the country in 2013. Yeah, they'll dog him with that. He's going to get some shit for that. Well, then, it, then there's the uranium thing. Was he actively involved in that? Well, I'm, no, I'm thinking about the Ukrainian thing. I said uranium. Oh, <laughs> Okay. There is a he's difference. Got, he's involved in some uranium. Uh, I said uranium again. Ukrainian mines or something. No, over there? that's his son. His son has a yeah. has the hedge fund uh, in Ukraine. That's where yeah. they have some business going on. Yeah, Ukraine is they they love those guys over there, doing all kinds of cool stuff for them. Yeah, greasing some wheels. There is a uh, this guy's this guy hasn't got a prayer. Well, not this is what I wanted to ask on your cosmic weenie scorecard. How is Joe doing? Is he he, st- he must be the front Joe runner? Number two, but who's one? I, Bernie. Huh. And and Bert Beto is out. And no, I, Beto's been dropped down to the second tier. Well, I noticed something about Beto. I know how to pronounce it now. It's Beto. Beto. Yeah, it's like saying Roberto. You just drop the ro and the r. Ro- so ro- Beto. 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 All right, Beto. He was at the uh, he was at the SEIU. This is a short clip. Immigra- immigration, millions living well, in the shadows, working some of the toughest jobs. Shit, one channel only. Sorry. Lucky to make a minimum wage. Some not even making that. 
kept in modern day bondage their immigration status, used as leverage to keep them down from fully participating in this country's success and in our economy. An economy that works too well for too few and not well enough for most Americans. Now, that's interesting. It's like zero channels went to the stream on that. Anyway, th- even if you didn't hear the clip, it doesn't matter that much because the point of me playing it is something you couldn't hear. Beto was wearing a suit with a tie. Huh. So that well, means that means there's panic in the tent, panic in the yeah. disco. Yeah, and they're trying. To, yeah, they, they've got to yeah, more presidential. You know, they've got consultants in, and people yeah, are telling them what to do. He, now he's totally screwed. These days, and I think after Trump, you have to really show who you are. And he's so phony. Yeah, he's a phony. He's totally phony, and every and got smart people hoodwinked. You know, well, he'd be better off if he went back to his punk rock roots. Yeah, we're putting you and Mimi near the banker. Yeah, good. You said that already. <laughs> No, I expect to have a nice conversation with him. Yes, you, you will. Definitely. About short sales in the 21st century. <laughs> I mean, bring Horowitz around. So one of so one of the big questions for the Democrat uh, candidates, uh, or one of the virtue signaling things that's out there right now is, oh, yes, we have to have a conversation about uh, letting people in jail felons vote. And I think uh, Bernie, Kamala Harris... Uh, Swalwell, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just we just throw him in there because he's he's entertaining to watch. They're all kind of on board. Like, yeah, you know, you should you should be able to you should be able to to vote when you're incarcerated. It's, uh, you know, we should have a conversation about it. Here's what's interesting, and we talked. You and I talked about this. I think we both agree that when you're incarcerated, probably not a good idea. But you should be able to vote when you get out, which in many states is not the case. Correct. Um, a friend of mine who was incarcerated for uh, two years in the state of California for white collar crime, uh, and this is something I never even considered, continued to receive his ballots. So his wife would just send him the ballots, he'd check off the boxes, send them back, and she'd send it in, and he voted. Oh, that's interesting. They've never, they, they never cut that, you know, they never made the connection. And how would you really? It shows how shitty the system is. Oh, it's terrible. Because when you think about, hey, you're incarcerated, you can't vote anymore. Well, you know, does that mean that in the system somewhere, in the database, a little flag is checked? I'm going to guess no. So you, you probably just can still vote. Yeah, yeah, you probably can. Yeah. So it I, must be the honor system. Well, just like our taxes. But it's yeah. but Yeah, there you go. But think about it. I mean, if if they send you a ballot, then the system clearly has not determined you are uh, invalid for such no, voting. You should be glad about this. The uh you don't want the system to be that good. Right. As far as I'm concerned, that's great. It just shows, yes, the system screwed up, doesn't work because there's not cross data referencing, especially in California. If you're a criminal in one county mm-hmm. and they're all uh, over to get you, you know, arrest you, you just move to a different county. They never figure it out. Right. Uh, it's just a very common problem in California with criminality. Mm. But one of these days, for example, there's a number of uh, what we don't. Here's the thing that really is bothersome but besides having the computer in the car and having it checked when you go get your car smogged Mm -hmm. which they could cross-reference against as we know i've said it for years it's going to happen someday but they haven't done it yet the data on the computer and traffic violations they're going to be merged they're going to be merged yeah they'll be merged you'll be making illegal u-turns you'll be caught you'll be everything you do on the car that's illegal going over a few miles over the speed limit you're you're going to get a ticket they haven't merged that throughout the state of California, even though some law enforcement uses this data, but most as far as I know, just too much work or too much trouble. There are cameras everywhere yeah. that record license plates. They're everywhere. California mm-hmm. is crawling with these cameras recording wherever you go. And they could easily put together a, a map of where you were, where, not based on a GPS or anything else. Screw that. 
You don't even need the GPS or the phone, your your cell phone. Mm. Uh, they just have these snapshots of you know your car's license plate all over the place. Yeah, and they they don't do anything with that data that I know of. <clears throat> I was just reading about a company called Uber Media, and they claim to track mainly geolocation of eight hundred million uh, phones or devices, which seems like a lot. Um, but I guess through acquisitions, et cetera, and they have an SDK and I think there's incentives to put it into your, uh, into your app. And so, uh, and these guys are pretty sophisticated. They sell to everybody and, and, and mainly for retail tracking, but they have all, a, a large portion of this already because they're showing on their website, I think it's ubermedia.com. And I don't think it's anything to do with Uber, the, 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 the driving no, I'm company. Sure it does. Uber's a good yeah. old word. Yeah. Um, they claim a lot, you know, they, and they do GIS right down to retail, you know, right down to your footsteps. And so do you get all that together? And for them, it would be easy to integrate the VIN, uh, the VIN number of your yeah. car. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of uses for that database. So repo people, there's all yeah. kinds of, <clears throat> yeah. you know, the tax people who always want to, uh, uh, the franchise tax board in California. Yeah, they want to always, they want to know where you're, where you've been, what you've been doing, what you at. So. They want to know if you're in the state because right. if, you, if you move out of California, they keep tabs on you for years yeah. because they figure, well, who's going to move out of California? They're going to be back. They're going to spend too much time in California. We can hit them with, the, with our income tax because mm. you can all you can if you leave California as a taxpayer, as an income taxpayer for the California state. Mm -hmm. You can only come back to California something like three or four months out of the year. If you're here more than that, then you're a, then they consider you a resident again. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you have to pay taxes. pay taxes. Yeah, and so they're always dogging people who would. I've gotten calls from a number of people that said, "You know, so and so and so and so." This I'm with the franchise tax board. I said, "Yeah, I know who it is." Yeah. Uh, have you? When's the last time you saw him? Uh, I haven't seen him for a couple of years. Oh, well, that's okay, people thanks, just trolling, fine. just trolling. They're clicking, yeah. Wow. I've had this wow. happen with at least five, no, four, one, two, three, four. I think four people I've had this happen. They've, they've called. The, the U.S. government called me once trying to get <laughs> uh, a, a very famous guy who's, I do know, although I haven't seen him again. I haven't seen him for years, a British guy, and he uh, was hmm. paying U.S. taxes. He left the country, and they keep thinking he's here all the time. And so they, when's the last time you saw him? Uh, how, wow. long you, how long was he in the country? Do you know all oh, that sort of thing? And they're trying to now. What now? What, now why are they calling you? Are you a known stooge? <laughs> <laughs> I never get these calls. I'm an associate. Apparently, <laughs> I'm like sorry, associate, guys. associate. <laughs> I'm an associate. These folks. So how is Patrick Stewart these days? Patrick Stewart? Yeah, wasn't know. he? Wasn't he the Brit they were looking for? No. <laughs> just, this, is a, just this is a rich guy. Patrick but, Stewart is a rich guy. Yeah, not like this guy. Huh. So um, the point is, is that they they'll do this, but with these databases and these and these license plate checkers and yeah. all these other things yeah. going on, they shouldn't have to call anybody. No, they can just say, "Hey, you were you were you're in this car. This is your car, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you've been in California for six months. You owe us money." Well, because of all this tracking and because of the way systems are set up, and actually thanks thanks to an, an actual governmental procedure, turns out the deconstruction we've done of the spying on Trump associates appears to be correct. Yeah. Um, and, and we're not the only ones. Former U.S. Attorney Joe DeGenoa spells it out in very clear terms. Uh, this is pretty simple stuff for career prosecutors like Rudy and myself. Um, it has been evident from day one that there was a brazen plot to exonerate Hillary Clinton illegally and then if she lost the election to frame Donald Trump. This dossier was a knowing part of that. It was created by Hillary Clinton. It was created knowingly by John Brennan as part of a scheme to do everything they could to harm Donald Trump. The problem for Brennan and Clapper and Comey and Baker and all of them now is, is that the FISA court has already communicated with the Justice Department about its findings. And their findings are that for more than four years before the election of Donald Trump, there was an illegal 
spying operation going on by FBI contractors, four of them, to steal personal information, electronic information about Americans, and to use it against the Republican Party. There are going to be indictments. There's going to be grand juries. John Brennan isn't going to need one lawyer. He's going to need five. <laughs> so to, uh, to reiterate what's happening here is the FISA court itself, and this is the documents that, that, uh, that, that we have been looking at, themselves say, oh, well, here's where the, here are these four contractors who were looking up, doing the about lookup on uh, United States persons. When you do that in this uh, NSA or database and the FBI and their contractors apparently have access to it, um, you cannot do that on a U.S. citizen unless you have a warrant. And that's why they had to come up with the warrant based upon some, you know, more spy craft, really, of Carter Page and George, you know, Papadopoulos, you know, being whispered by into his ear on one hand. Hey, we got the word of Russians. We got we got Hillary emails and him passing it on to someone else, which in the documents has shown the person who told him about the Russians having uh, dirt on Hillary. Uh, is listed in the um, Mueller report as a agent of a foreign country, a foreign agent. It turns out that foreign agent was actually an agent of the United Kingdom as a <laughs> a spy operative posing as a Russian. Yeah. So, so while the report does not lie, it's not exactly the way you're supposed to get uh, a warrant to do this type of surveillance. Uh, there's a second part to this. The Obama administration for more than four years before the 2016 election allowed four contractors working for the FBI to illegally surveil American citizens w illegally. The FISA court has already found that. By the way, uh, uh, Robert Ray mentioned that there is the Horowitz report coming out in May or possibly early June. There's another report that everybody has forgotten about involving James Comey alone. That will be out in two weeks. That report is going to be a bombshell. It's going to open up the investigation bombshell. on a very high note, and there will be criminal referrals in it. The FISA court abuse is the center of this entire abuse of governmental power. And the, ju the chief judge of that court has already ruled that the FBI broke the law and that the people at the head of the Justice Department, Sally Yates, John Carlin, the assistant attorney general for the Nationalist Court, all knew about it and lied to the court, the FISA court, about it. All the bad people in this story are lawyers. Hmm. There's a hero. His name is Admiral Mike Rogers. Hmm. He was the head of the National Security Agency. He discovered the illegal spying. He went personally to the FISA court and brief the chief judge mm. and work with her for months to uncover the people who did it. The FISA court has already been told and has already told the Justice Department who lied to that court, and that has been given to Bill Barr already. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, though. I To me, it feels like this is still not going to go anywhere, even though it should. It just I agree. I mean, and it seems guy, like a Fox News thing only. No one else really cares. This guy that was doing the talking there. D the Genoa? Uh, yeah, he's been on a lot of programs for months. Uh, for years, pretty years, much, pretty years, much years. Saying, pretty much saying the same thing. And, and I first heard him. In fact, I got a lot of good stuff from him. He's the one who has all the, uh, he's got a lot of good dirt on a lot of things that, that we've been discussing over the yes. last six months. Yeah. But he's always got this theory that the, all this is coming down and I, it never no comes down for no. it. No, I, I agree. That's what I'm saying. This seems like a Fox News thing. Let me see if, uh, wonder what else I have on the list from back in the day. FBI Secret Society. Nah. No, it, you're right. It's all kind of the same thing. Although, uh, my cautious prediction that we would have patsies for this if it really did come down. Th if I think it was Thursday night, even after the show that I, I, I saw this. Text messages between former FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page indicate that the FBI may have tried to use post-election briefings to monitor the Trump team. 
These text messages were released in 2018, but Fox has learned that they are now under renewed scrutiny from congressional investigators. The texts struck and page discussed uh, using post-election briefings to find people they could, quote, develop for potential relationships, end quote, hmm. which may refer to cultivating sources to inform on the president's associates. The texts also discuss tracking lines of questioning they receive and, quote, assessing changes in demeanor by those at the meetings. Congressman Devin Nunez of California tells Fox that these texts are deep, uh, are evidence of deep irregularities, as you might imagine, in the FBI's Trump-Russia investigation. Senators Chuck Grassley and Ron Johnson, meanwhile, have sent a letter to Attorney General Bill Barr demanding more information. We will continue to monitor this extraordinary story. So if they if they do get it out, <clears throat> if they do get it into the public consciousness, I think it's still just going to be these two lovebirds. Mm-hmm. They were just love sick and crazy and all nutty about it, and so sorry. If you <laughs> or they can do one of those. So in the ca- the counterintelligence um, move, which is to bring weirdos out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. and I have a clip from the, one of them. This is uh, he's on CNN, and then he also wrote a piece. On NBC, the NBC has this a little newspaper online that has got all these editorials, very similar to the editorials you'd find in the WAPO or the mm-hmm. New York Times. And, and it's called Think. Mm. It's NBC Think. It's opinion analysis and essays. And these are all just anti-Trump <laughs> uh, essays. Yeah. And so there's one, people could look it up, is from the guy's Evan McMullen, whose name may ring a bell. Uh, Evan McMullen was the guy, if you remember, the CIA guy who ran on. Oh, the, the guy in U- Utah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. The the spook. They always have a spook candidate. Like uh, Mayor Pete is the spook candidate this time around. Yeah. Right. Well, the, there's something else going on here because I kept seeing the connection between uh, this guy Evan McMullen mm. is a is a I I don't know that he's a Mormon, but he went to BYU. Okay. Uh. Mike Lee, the the Trump hater senator from uh, Utah, went to BYU. Uh, Mitt Romney, the other Trump which which hater, what what does it stand for? BYU, Brigham Young, Brigham Young University. University? Okay, uh, BYU. It's a Mormon. It's the Mormon <laughs> University. It's in Utah, right? And so uh, Mitt Romney went to BYU. So I'm seeing BYU, 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 right. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, I'm suspecting that the Mormon church itself. It's a big spook operation. Well, it's either a spook operation or it is a anti-Trump operation. Maybe I don't know what Romney's well, got to do with it, but he's got something to do with it. Well, let's look at. And, but the public of Utah still voted for Trump. Mm hmm. So and they're mostly Mormons in Utah. And, you know, I don't know, that's a pretty high percentage. So the Mormon Mormon practitioners aren't against Trump, but somehow the church is or somebody in the church or part of the church. And I think it needs looking into personally. Let's listen to what this guy, Evan McMullen, CIA stooge, uh, has to say. President's ego is wounded when we talk about how the Russians attacked us and may have helped him get elected. Uh, But I actually think that we're a little naive to buy into that narrative. I think that's a fig leaf for the president. How can we ignore that this president barely won uh, the Electoral College, barely won enough votes to win the Electoral College? It was 70,000 votes. In that kind of (laughs) close election, presidential election, everything matters. And he's now deeply unpopular in the country. His popularity ratings are going even down further than they were. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. on. I'm trying to understand the first part. He won the Electoral College by 70,000 votes. No. That's what he said. But, well, I got through that, but I know what you're saying. He's very, yeah, it's kind of what he said. But this popularity thing is not true. His popularity is, is running around 45%, which is not unusual for any president at this time. He's trending, the, man. But what is what, it, what he had to say is bull crap. And the woman on CNN, the <laughs> girl there, yeah, doesn't. She, why doesn't she call him out? She lets this guy go on and on and on like a maniac. Are you presuming that these people are news people? This is an entertainment yeah, I, show I, I, you're I know, watching. And so we can't point. ignore that this is a president who benefited from the Russians' information warfare attack on our country and may need that attack again to win. And so it, it's not just about his ego. It's, it's deeper than that. <laughs> 
You think he's doing it to try to gain an advantage? I think we're incredibly naive to ignore that likely reality. Yes, it's the, the Russians conducted a sweeping and systematic attack on our country, according what? to the Mueller report and our <laughs> intelligence agencies. And you're and saying he's, you're essentially, he's using that as a tool in your estimation. I, I think so. Look, in, in a race that's that close, everything matters. And he knew it was happening, according to the Mueller report, and sought to capitalize on it. So even by that, that fact tells us that he was aware that it was happening and it was, he was aware that it could help him and he hoped it would help him. Just uh, Utah for a second. Number one, the Mormon church has a huge database on everybody, every living soul, um, which I believe was uh, folded into or, uh, or separated from Ancestry.com. So they, but it doesn't matter. They've got DNA. They've got uh, incredibly detailed records of birth and death, and God knows what else, literally. And also in Utah is the beautiful, liquid-cooled, you know, hydrogen storage facility of the NSA. Yeah, so it's in Utah. So it kind of makes sense that there's uh, something going on there. Well, it's getting, I would say this to anyone that could pass the word along, it's getting a little obvious you got this guy who ran for president. You got Romney. You got Mike Lee, who's otherwise a fairly good senator, except for his anti-Trump stuff. And it's always a never – they're both never Trumpers. And, and Romney is a horrible person. Uh, the, the, this is really becoming apparent that something's going on, and it's not a positive thing. If you read this piece that's in the uh, NBC news site uh, by the same guy, McMullen. It goes on and I'm making all these crazy assertions that have nothing to do with anything. It should be blamed mm-hmm. on Obama anyway if it was t- right. taking place in 2016, this right. old this Russian stuff. But but saying, well, it, according to the, the <laughs> Mueller report, this and that, which is not true, I'm going to start saying it. According to the Mueller report, the uh, No Agenda is the best podcast in the universe, according to the Mueller report. And Bill Barr backed it up. We doubled down on that. Yeah. We need uh, bumper stickers. Uh, by the way, the No Agenda Shop guys have put together a fun little item. They have a new t-shirt. Yeah, podcast or union. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I got to order me a podcast or union t-shirt. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> very creative. I have only one more clip in this category, unless you have something, because it's a little long. I just want us to listen to it and enjoy it and stop it whenever we're done with it. Do you have anything else about this particular, about 2020 in general or about the collusion? No. Okay. Um, Rhodes. Ben Rhodes was the national security advisor for President Obama. And he has a book out, like everyone else. You know, sure. this, this is the great thing about being in government. You can do a book. Well, I just admit to stop in for a second. Let's mention something, which is what the problem is with the mayor of what well, forgot what mayor was busted recently. This mayor. woman in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Mayor yes. Was busted because she's been selling their children. She's books. corrupt. Uh, for five, you know, she she get a five hundred dollar deal for some kids book that she wrote that you can't get on Amazon. You can't find it in a bookstore. You can't find it anywhere. Books. The book deals that we're talking about with these government officials is is many times, I don't think there's any doubt about it because of this Baltimore situation. Nobody wants to bring it up too much in the news, but the books are a front for a bribe. Ooh, well, I have a clip on through the publishing companies. I have a clip on that very situation in Baltimore. Federal agents raided Baltimore City Hall Thursday morning, taking away items from the mayor's office. They also searched her two homes and seized financial records from her attorney's office related to her healthy Holly Children's book, a sign of a growing investigation into embattled Mayor Catherine Pugh that sources say had been going on behind the scenes for more than a year. Rabbits hopping. Mayor Pugh has not been seen in public since a press conference last month. Month. She's still on paid medical leave after a bout of pneumonia, and her attorney says she's in no shape to make a decision about her future, yeah, despite bet. growing calls for her resignation. The mayor has faced a firestorm of criticism over the roughly $800,000 she received from various organizations doing business with the city for her self-published Healthy Holly series. The University of Maryland medical system alone gave Pew half a million dollars for the books while she was on their board. The system confirmed they, too, 
received a subpoena for information relating to the deal. For the first time, Governor Larry Hogan called for the mayor to step down. Tweeting, now more than ever, Baltimore City needs strong and responsible leadership. Mayor Pugh has lost the public trust. She's clearly not fit to lead. For the good of the city, Mayor Pugh must resign. So the way I understand it is uh, companies like Merck, uh, who either subsequently or had a you know, 40 plus million dollar contract with the city, bought up $20,000 worth of her endnote self-published book. So it was, it was, those numbers are higher. It was Kaiser Permanente, I think. Went, oh, Kaiser, went, you're right. Kaiser, for Kaiser sure. Kaiser went yeah. in for, I think it was a half a, uh, <laughs> half a million dollars. That's for children's, that's great. And you get in the New York Times, probably. And the, the, what they're trying to prove is that they bought like X number of copies. The, the copies sold for five bucks a piece wholesale. Yeah. And um, they're trying to prove these, that, that, you know, they buy X number of books, so it'd be 100,000 copies of the book. And then they're trying to prove that there was even that many printed. It seems the printer is not, just, I don't know. We don't know anything. We printed a couple thousand and maybe somebody else printed the rest. Oh, so fantastic. A, so this is a bull crap thing, but I'm starting to think that, you know, there's the way the Yakuza use the golf club memberships. Uh, it's an old, and I think Trump can be associated. Trump, Trump does the it's, same, it, yeah, with Mar-a-Lago, of course. Yeah, <laughs> of course. They have a place, and <laughs> it, it, it's overpriced as hell. And uh, you want to, in the case of the Yakuza, they, you know, if you've slighted one of them, you were, your penance was to, because uh, the cops aren't going to do anything, your penance that you don't get killed and have your family butchered and chopped up. Your penance is you had to take out a membership in one of these ten thousand dollar a month clubs right. or ten thousand right. a year or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they have a sliding scale, um, and yeah, so it's very suspicious. So I'm suspicious of the Mar-a-Lago. I'm suspicious of the book deals. Oh, eight million dollar advance on a book. I mean, God. how many books do you have to sell? And they're not going to sell these books. Yeah. Uh, it's just really suspicious to me. It's this all seems like a money laundering kind of thing. How do you get a bribe to, to to Obama after he's out of office? I'm just thinking, what can we take a bribe for that'll get your vinegar book published? I'm just trying to think, come up with something. <laughs> I'd love to have an idea. <laughs> All right. Hey, the book's being worked on as we speak. I know. <laughs> um, ben Rhodes, he was the national security advisor for President Obama. And he must have known what was going on if they were initiating an investigation. Of course, we've heard... Um, through numerous channels, the President Obama, uh, he was the one that all he said was, if we do anything, let's do it, buy the book. Oh, I, I came kind of, kind of close. Buy the book. Um, not buy the book, but buy the book. So uh, uh, this guy, uh, who was it, Nicholas Balazzi? I've never heard of him. He's, He's basically, they, what, you, what he said was neuro-linguistic programming for buy the buy book. Buy the, the book. book. <laughs> Go on, everybody, buy my book. Right book. So Nicholas Balazzi is on YouTube. He may be somewhere else. That's where I watched him. And he went to the book signing. Again, there's your book for Ben Rhodes. And started asking him questions uh, about, you know, what the Obama administration knew inside the White House when this FBI spying was initiated. Um, the video is, it even adds to it in this case because you see his face. But I think it really translates in how... Rhodes answers every single question, and it, it, I mean, it's my impression, of course, and I may be biased, but the guy seems like he's really struggling and, and like, trapped, you know? <laughs> like, you stole the cookies, didn't you? DOJ is going to investigate, they're already investigating the origins of the Russia probe during the Obama years. Do you think they're going to find anything? No. In the, no, 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 no. With their investigation? No, 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 no. Look, look I can't be clear enough about this. We didn't even know that there was an FBI investigation of Trump. I didn't. President Obama didn't. Like, we don't, we actually abided by the firewalls between, if there were any investigations that took place, those decisions were made in the Justice Department, in the FBI, not in the White House. They will find nothing that suggests that there was any political or White House involvement in any of that. Literally, I learned about the FBI investigation in Trump as a private citizen in the freaking Washington Post. Like, so, like, this, you have to understand that 
we actually abided by <laughs> the, the long-standing practice of the White House not getting involved in that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The Republicans on the Hill seem to be focusing on the dossier. And we had nothing to do with went, that. Yeah, so you, you, had, you never had the, seen what, it when you no. were in the White House? We, I saw it. Uh, I heard about it at the very end when, you know, in January of 2000, um, well, 2017. Like, I, we weren't involved in commissioning the dossier. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's cr- this is this is he where said he saw it. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, of course. The guy is lying. And then to do that, that's crazy. Instead of the, the classic, no, denial. He's doing what we've seen many people do. So, it's crazy. Why would we do yeah. that? We're, um, no, we're no crooks. We, we learned about it when it was in in the in the report that was um, uh, that it was appended to the report that went to Congress at the end of the administration. Yeah, the Republicans are saying it was circulating, likely circulating in the government through the White House, and that they're going to look into that specifically. <laughs> the dossier is circulating. I have been investigated <laughs> by these committees, and I guess I'm telling you, they didn't find it. Like, we didn't we, – no, we had nothing to do with the dossier. I mean, uh, like, literally. Literally. Nothing to do. Now, now, this is – now, when you do this, like, literally, we had literally nothing to do with it. Literally. ...do with this dossier. When you had seen it, did you believe anything that was in it, or – and, and do you think the FBI should have taken it seriously? I, I, look, I'm not an investigator. I, I didn't. I, I haven't even read this whole dossier. Like, oh, like, he hasn't even read it, John. He hasn't even read the dossier. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. You guys are all fixated on this. Like, have fun. Have your witch hunt. Oh. Like, we did not initiate this. Like, <laughs> like we did not. Uh, you know this to be true, so I don't know why you're asking me these questions. I'm only asking you because the president's focusing on it and we're well, covering it, you know, in the media. And he keeps talking about yeah. now he's going to, you know, the go. president lies relentlessly every day. Oh, so okay. yeah. I don't think you need to chase down every lie he tells. What do you think so far? Is he telling the truth or is he uh, lying? He's like he's he's not he's lying by omission. Yes, by omission, but also just it just doesn't come across very confidently. <laughs> but yeah, how about it? Yeah. And then there's the other side too, right? I mean, that if he focuses on payback for what he perceives as his enemies in the a government and in the deep state, then that is going to backfire possibly on him by prolonging possibly. this entire process. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. What do you think? I think people can read a report that is exhaustively prepared by a Republican, Bob Mueller, appointed by a Republican president, George Bush, as the director of the FBI, (laughs) that details... Yeah, you're right. By omission, he forgets to say, and was held over for another two years in the Obama administration because he already knew where all the bodies were buried and had to continue some the first cleanup operation. But okay, Republican guy. Exhaustively, contacts between President Trump's campaign and associates and a hostile foreign power are you are you tired of him well i i think the audience is yeah Uh, i agree i think i'm done with it but it's interesting how he just uh keeps he's full of shit this guy (laughs) yes and he's if you see the video he comes across as nervous about it that may just be how he is. I don't know. You know, he might be a nervous guy anyway. Could be. Could be. Could be. Now, the one guy, that's the final thing. We've got to take a break. The one guy who is completely changed, and uh, I got this clip like, two days ago, and only this morning did I see the tweet from the president. So now at least I know why the president is saying this has happened. This is uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano, always been the the defender on Fox News of the all things legal for the president. Whoa! So when the president asked his former advisor and my former colleague at Fox, KT McFarland, to write an untruthful letter to the file knowing the government would subpoena it, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked Corey Lewandowski, his former campaign manager, to get Mueller fired, that's obstruction of justice. When the president asked his then White House counsel to get Mueller fired and then lie about it, that's 
wants obstruction of justice. When he asked Don McGahn to go back to the special counsel and change his testimony, that's obstruction of justice. When he dangled a pardon in front of Michael Cohen in order to keep Cohen from testifying against him, that's obstruction of justice. Why not charge him? Because the Attorney General of the United States would have blocked such a charge. Because the Attorney General of the United States is of the view that obstruction of justice can only occur if you're interfering with a criminal investigation of yourself. But that's not what the obstruction statute says. And that's not what law enforcement believes. And that's not what prosecutors do. Prosecutors prosecute people who interfere with government functions. And that's what the president did by obstruction. Where is this going to end? We don't know. But I'm disappointed in the behavior of the president. His job is to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States to uphold and to enforce federal law, not to violate it. If he had ordered his aides to violate federal law, to save a human life, or to preserve human freedom, he would at least have a moral defense to his behavior. But ordering them to break federal law to save him from the consequences of his own behavior, that is immoral, that is criminal, that is defenseless, and that is condemnable. So the relationship between President Trump and Fox News is, is really weird now. And so Judge Napolitano, who has been a real supporter of the president, now, this is, was a promo and, for and a And by the way, we should mention that that arguments that he made can also be, and we've heard both sides of the exact same thing. Sure. You can suggest that somebody go, why don't you go do this? And then they don't do it because we know that. Right, right, right. But that's, that's, that's just a thought crime. Yeah. But it's not even important in what's going on with Fox News. Fox is no, changing. I know, but I'm just saying that Napolitano. Mm-hmm has been on the other side of the debate yes. consistently until now. And so uh, Trump tweeted this morning. I, let me see. I put a little mark here. Ever since Andrew came to my office to ask that I appoint him to the U.S. Supreme Court, and I said, no, he has been very hostile. <laughs> also asked for a pardon for his friend, a good pal of low ratings, Shepard Smith. <laughs> now... Uh, <coughs> I don't know if I doubt Napolitano really said, hey, man, I belong on the Supreme Court. Do you think he did that? Do you think he, he said, I, appoint me to the Supreme Court? You never know. Uh, but it's, it's, I mean, it's possible. And Trump's not the kind of guy that's, that's circumspect when it comes to this sort of thing and could be full of crap and just lying. But it seems... That yeah, there's other better things to lie about. Well, there's a, um, there's a lot happening at Fox uh, behind the and scenes. It, 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 it is noteworthy that Napolo, N- Napolo, Napolitano has switched completely from an incredibly, I, I think, somewhat over the top pro you know, Trump uh, mm-hmm. pro Trump interpretation of events, which is now being done by uh, Dershowitz, and I'd like to see those two get together. Uh, he switched over from that to being extremely aggressive. That last cut, the clip you played makes it sound like Trump is just a walking felon, felon. And so there's something did happen. Well, I think there's more that's more going on. Let's look at, let's look at what we're seeing. We're seeing uh, Donna Brazil is now uh, in Fox as a, um, as a, a pundit. We have yeah. Paul Ryan, enemy of, uh, of Trump, who's on the board of directors they obviously there had to be some appeasement for the Fox Disney deal, although the Fox News is not included in that. But now I see right. now I see other M five M outlets are talking about the discontent amongst the rank and file within Fox News because the top uh, ratings draw, although not money makers currently, because their advertisers have all been, have all been pestered away, is. Uh, uh, Carlson, uh, Hannity, <clears throat> uh, Ingraham, uh, I guess maybe Judge Janine, we, who of course was kicked off for some comment that was deemed Islamophobic, and Trump uh, apparently called Rupert Murdoch and said, "Dude, get her back on the air." So there's there's a fight going on inside Fox on the somewhere underneath on the back end, and I think they're hollowing it out, and I I believe you're going to see at least one big head roll. A big name has got to go. 
Well, they've had. Well, the and I think it's Ingram. No, she's too new. They do they, have to. Be, she would be perfect to sacrifice. They got to sacrifice someone. She's to, not that big of a sacrifice. It either has to be Hannity or, or Carlson. Carlson. I th- but uh, okay. Hannity would be the big one. Oh man, that would be that would be fantastic to watch. <laughs> it would be a mess. What would he do? I mean, he, next thing you know, he'd be <laughs> over with Glenn Beck <laughs> and the and, what, and uh, what's the other guy? Uh, O'Reilly. They could start a podcast network. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm keeping my eye on this because I okay. F- if you're going to make that prediction, I'm going to I'm going to up the ante and say it's going to be Hannity. Okay, I'm saying it's uh, they've taken Ingraham. a swipe. They've taken a couple of shots at Hannity already, and he's gotten through it. But, but they if, haven't if really- they if they kick Hannity is their bread and butter. That's the bread and butter. That is the president's personal friend. That would be that's too much of a strike. Carlson possibly, but I think that they'd be worried. Uh, Ingraham is just dis- disposable. No, I think she's it's easier very for disposable, to throw her out. She's not that important. In, in, no that, one but would that's care. Why I'm, that's, yeah, I disagree. It would be seen I, as, a, as a notch for the, for the media matters people or the sleeping giants or whoever is. You know, she, and she's not that offensive. No, that's, it has nothing to do with her. It's just a name. They got to get someone gone. Someone's got to go. Shepard Smith's the one they should get rid of. Nah, but, she, you know, Shep, they love Shep because he's doing all lefty stuff. Yeah, he does. His they are changing thing. over there at Fox News, and the president, for some no, reason, is fighting it. they've been infiltrated, it. infiltrated yes. by yeah. the, yeah. the so- social great. justice warrior it's types. It's great to watch. I they love got it. rid of the aisle, a- a- ales, and he drops dead shortly thereafter. And Lachlan Murdoch, I think, is running the show. <laughs> yes, he is. And, and also, and, I, th- I think they're messing around with uh, Tucker Carlson's teleprompter. It may it, it may just be a horrible prompter operator, but the, you know the, you, you'll see him talk and be, and in the middle of the sentence he'll say uh, measles outbreak quarantine issued at UCLA, you know because I can tell the prompter's not scrolling in time. I can see it. I can see what's happening. I've done yeah, this. Yeah, it's very noticeable. I think they're they're messing with him. So maybe you're right. Maybe it is Carlson. We'll see. Someone's got to go. And unlike well, the No Agenda show, it can actually happen there. Can't happen here. Yeah. No. But with that, I do have to thank you for your courage and say in the morning to you, the man who put light the sea in lightly circulating report, John C. Devorak. And in the morning to you, according to the Mueller report, we're number one. <laughs> in the morning, all ships and sea boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, all the names and nights out there. Bill Barr backs that up and says in the morning to all of the trolls at noagendastream.com. It's our official troll room where you can listen to the uh, show in real time. Any of our th- hundreds of shows that rotate on the stream 24-7, hop in there, chat away. And uh, we love seeing people uh, helping us out, handing off one-liners, checking us, fact-checking in real time, and sometimes purposely trolling us, which is all part of how it works online. No agenda stream.com also in the morning uh to the artist who brought us the artwork for episode 1132 we titled that one false memification bradley selsor who i do not think has had a win he's done a couple of pieces of art uh and he nailed it with the um Monopoly ownership cards, the deed cards for both Golan Heights and Trumpville. <laughs> there were a number of people who came up with the Trumpville uh, artwork, but somehow taking the extra step of putting it on Monopoly cards and actually making Trumpville rent more expensive than Golan Heights itself. <laughs> All kinds of nice touches. We really appreciated that. It was a great piece of work, and um, it really helps the program. Many of these, even the Luminary, the hot new app, the hot new app with all that proprietary content that's stealing your MP3s, even they have the rotating artwork. So you sh- you do no agenda, you you search around, it shows up. Hey, that's a new, fresh, new piece of art, and uh, we appreciate what all of our artists do. And sometimes that art shows up on mugs and T-shirts and other paraphernalia at noagendashop.com. Artists get a a cut, get a piece of the action, but also, as I said, really just help the show in discovery and getting and keeping people excited. So, uh, noagendaartgenerator.com. Again, thank you, Bradley Selsor, and thank everybody, all artists who uh, diligently upload and contribute. 
Well, we want to thank a few people for being executive and associate executive producers for show 1133, which is the lucky couple of lucky numbers, 11 and 33, uh, starting with Sir Scott. And he says, uh, donate for show 1133 with numbers like those. How can I not? And he came in with eight hundred forty-one dollars and fifty-one cents. Wow! So very. Is very, there is there a reason for this? Uh, thank for you this much number? for that. Yeah, he wanted to get the Earl. Ah, okay. So he's now Earl. Um, I think he's on the. Yeah, he's always on the list. Lately, during the donation sec- sections, I've heard a lot of producers getting to Baron status and pro- proclaiming proud overlordship of those baronies. I got to baron level myself a few years ago, but declined to claim Northern Virginia as I felt a certain discomfort with the practitioners of a certain vocation. <laughs> he, didn't want to, he doesn't want to be culpable is what he's saying. I also am certain that any disagreements uh, with said group would have resulted in two to the head <laughs> and a posthumous allegations of my involvement with hookers and blow. <laughs> and so, like a lonely spinster, my cats and I agreed that it was okay to shrink, to shirk the joy of administering a piece of Gitmo Nation. <laughs> this past year, I escaped Gitmo Nation Amazon East and got a dude named Ben gig in Colorado. Mm-hmm. More spooks. Revitalized by the change in locale, I began to just some just spook city in uh-huh. Colorado, uh-huh. too, to say the least. Already has several baronies. Uh, I... Colorado does have a lot of barons. I briefly considered a coup, but declined the idea. Seeing how it was working in Venezuela and Syria, I realized that as a, an American, it isn't our forte anymore. Besides, if I were cool with regime change, I would have been happy with my neighbors in Virginia. Uh, I was <laughs> Virginia. Um, I was mulling over my options when it hit me. Rather than having the hard work and heavy lifting of running a barony, I'd like – this is a long-winded note, by the way. I'd like to cash in on my now Earl status to get a cushy position as Gitmo – in the Gitmo Nation bureaucracy. My legal counsel advised me per line seven of the Dvorak Peerage HDM document. <laughs> this is permiss- permissible as it falls under honorary titles. Now uh, the hard question is which bureaucracy do I want? The answer came to me uh, – came to me from the only sane guy out there, Al Sharpton. <laughs> Pending Congressional Peerage Committee approval, I hereby nominate myself to the position of Secretary of Counter-Tourism. <laughs> okay. Oh, shaggy dog. He finally got there. Okay. Yeah. With generous budget, <laughs> ambitious responsibilities, and ear-defined scope, I will faithfully execute the mission on the de- department and place – uh, the advancements of Gitmo Nation above all other priorities. Thanks, and God bless. Uh, can you play one of the Sharpton mashups at the end of the show? He's the best. Actually, I'll play. Yeah, I'll play a little bit now, and I'll throw some karma at you for uh, uh, for being the uh, what is he? Secretary of the of Counter Terror Tourism. Thanks. Good evening to Ralph. you, Ed. <laughs> is this Crown Hog Day Two? We are watching. That was Attorney General Eric Holder, <laughs> ABDs, about some Republicans <laughs> at home are already beating the drums of war. Today, the Pentagon refuted that claim, <laughs> and he said the American people do not want him to quote dwindling. He, they do not want him dwindling his thumbs. You can get a gig. As a caught a uh, contortionist, you've got karma. Yeah, more at the end of the show. I love Pentagon. There's nothing like a Pentagon of power. Todd Moss comes in with, from uh, Tempe, Arizona, sends a note in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> sorry. It's fired for some reason. So here's Todd's uh, note. It came with five hundred dollars. Want to thank him for that. Um. Yeah, he's in Tempe. I'm still out here listening and learning from the show as as a Southwest flighty. He's, the, he's our Southwest flight attendant. I'm huh. thinking I better up my uh, MMR encephalitis vaccines. Hmm. If the 800 max doesn't kill me, now I've got <laughs> this to worry about. <laughs> this donation will put me well into the knighthood and as such and as such. Please knight me as Todd Moss, knight of all high altitudinal aluminum tubing. Yes. He calls him, he says, it's when you're, 
He refers to his airplanes as aluminum tubing. Yes. Keep up the good work and get back on the plane. Huh. NJNK? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Todd. And we'll I give him a, a karma because he's in the air all the time. <laughs> and I look forward to knighting him later on. You've got karma. Mm, see you at the ceremony at the round table. You're the only one today. Sir David Fugazotto, Baron of Kansas City, three thirty nine ninety nine. Uh, my dearest Span- is Spanky and Buckwheat. As an update on the latest karma results from show 1111, the super uber mega karma show of a few months ago, so far all is proceeding as planned. Mm. I have more or less retired from the army and I've started a one year contract overseas working for the military industrial complex. <laughs> Dame Melody starts a master's in technology commercialization at UT Austin next month. I told her she would, she could just stay with you, Adam, <laughs> with what her being a dame and all. I hope that's okay. Hey, we don't have an address, so good luck finding me. Yeah. We don't exist. And Dame Isabella, through the hard work and being relatively close to the karmic center of Austin a few weeks ago, earned her solo dress in her... Oh, wow. She earned her solo dress in her chosen sport of Irish dance. Yeah. That's a big deal, isn't it? I guess. That's the super uber mega blingy dress yes. that dancers wear when they get to a certain level. So it's like a black belt. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're super uber mega, mega proud of her. I can imagine. So it's been an incredibly productive few months, largely due to all that karma goodness. Our house sale is still ongoing, so it would be double up on the real estate karma. That would be much appreciated. Another helping of F cancer karma for my buddy Brad's brain. Uh, Danka, Danka, sir. Danka, sir. Uh, I'm officially an expat now, so your show has become even more important to me. Keep up the good work. Uh, Sulkran and such. <laughs> Dave Fugazoto, Baron of Kansas City in absentia. You got it, man. An F cancer for your uh, for your buddy's brain and some real estate cancer for oh, some real estate karma. For, <laughs> no real estate, no real estate cancer. cancer. We're going to have you real estate karma. Here we go. <laughs> You've got karma. Sir Brian Warden in Cumming, Georgia, 33333. Hi, Buzzed and Buzzkill. Buzzed and Buzzkill. Buzz, Buzzed. You know, it's in South America and some of these places where they learn English, they always pronounce things like that. Buzz. Buzzed. 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 Oh, yes, Buzzed. Buzzed mm-hmm. instead of Buzzed. Mm-hmm. Uh, with I uh, just paying back for the job karma from eleven twenty three one offer from my interview and a separate out of the blue job offer, separate out of the blue out of the blue job offer, the nut job Pelosi sure knows how to get the jobs jobs jobs. I am part of the Atlanta local four hundred four. It's the area code, not the web error. Yes, J- Johnny shout outs. John, oh, it's not the web error, Johnny. That's referring to me. Shout outs to the Viscount, Sir Er Herb Lamb, Andre, who came in from Nashville, Sir Mike Crotch, uh, Mike Crotch, sorry, uh, D- uh, Satellite Bob, Mike, Michael, John, Don, Alyssa, Mark, and Z- Zach, John, and Tina from Charlotte. Uh, Jingles, Alex Jones, growing babies and cows, that's true. Uh, Alex Jones, chemicals that turn the frogs gay, that's true. <laughs> if you're, If you irradiate poop, it's poop. So that's true. Thank you for your courage, Sir Brian Williams. So I don't know. He actually sent me an email about the is something from episode five hundred about irradiating poop. Uh, I could not find that, so I just I got a couple things. I'll just switch back and forth to make him happy because it's it's different to hear some. He different just wants the it's true thing be, behind Pro- it. Is probably. Bomb. Look it up for yourself. I mean, this is what they're. What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. <laughs> And I'm not saying people didn't naturally have homosexual feelings. I'm not even getting into it, quite frankly. I mean, give me a break. You think I am like, oh, shocked by it. I love here bashing it because I don't like gay people. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. That's true. Truth of the matter is everybody poops. They're pooping on the street. You've got karma. Oh, a little something different. Uh, onward to our first associate executive producer, Tony Cabrera. 
226.44. No Agenda Shop checked in with your latest cut of sales. Thanks for continuing to inspire new designs with the topics you cover every show and karma for the artists who make the shop possible. Can I get an Ale any Alex Jones clip? Random number. Uh, followed by a, that's true. Same exact request. That's interesting. And before I played that, I think you did you did I not hear or did you skip over um, Jim Briscoe? I did skip over Jim Briscoe. Good. That gives me a chance to get a, a, a different clip from Alex Jones. <laughs> Do Jim Briscoe. Uh, night, Jim Briscoe. Yes. Sir Jim Briscoe. Uh, hey, gents. Night, Jim Briscoe here. Sure, by now I've got some other title, but I haven't done the accounting. I uh, would like some moving to Silicon Valley for sabbatical karma. If you can spare, probably need it. Uh, road the often touted road the often touted by John California Zephyr train down. It was a nice ride. The food on board was surprisingly good. Thanks for the shows. Keep, helps keep me sane. So you need to, there you go. Karma for you. You've got karma. All right. So now we have Tony oh, no. Cabrera, and he wanted uh, some AJ f followed by. That's true. Yeah, you're right. That is random number theory, but also. These things are trending. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you needed karma for the artist. Yes, here we go. You've got karma. And thank you for everything you guys at No Agenda Shop do. It's great. No Agenda Shop. Sir John, Shop overall, uh, Sir John overall night runner in Victoria, B.C., 211.33. Um... Hey, Adam John, Sir John Overall Night Runner from Victoria, B.C., Candanavia. Here's a 21133 in honor of show 1133 to get the 33 three out of view for a while. The last couple of weeks, it seems I've been haunted by 30, 33 everywhere. So it means it's time to donate again and to finally get a $5 weekly donation set up. I'm sure this will help. Also, since Adam has talked about 2030 a couple of shows back, He's been talking about 2030 for the last year. For a long time, years. yeah. <clears throat> I uh, seem to see it in the news articles everywhere, and it, it, we noticed this five years ago. News articles everywhere and in the middle of articles for no apparent reason. Yes, this is true. It's true. This is true. To get this one clear, to get this one clear, I have to set up the big countdown clock over at 2030countdown.com. It seems we have just under 10 years and eight months until the end. Hmm. I'd like to say, that's a good one. Check it out. See who, who put that together? I would like to say uh, thanks again for the help on the No Agenda community. And Adam gave me during my father's passing back in September and all the help with getting the honor guard for his oh, funeral. Ah. Yes, I remember now. Of course. Yes. We uh, have <clears throat> look, man, it was it, we just have contacts. And what, we didn't do much. It was really the No Agenda community that did that. <clears throat> Agent Orange jumped in. Lots of military it's folk. True. It's true. Please play following jingles. 69, 69 Atlas Shrug. Don't be a denier and business karma for my web hosting design business and WordPress plugins. A to Z podcast, Sir John Overall. 69, 69, dudes. Atlas Shrug. By Ayn Rand. Don't be a denier. <laughs> the science is in. Science. You've got karma uh onward to night of huge data who came in 201 dollars and two cents he's got night of huge data climbing back on board no jingles no karma but could use a new invisible hat ah yes hold on put it on the drone get ready all right and sending it off to you and go all right should be there any minute onward to baron dirty dick bangs of dc two hundred dollars Beagle donation in honor of our beloved Beagle Buck, who passed in 2017. Aww. Of course, we had the Beagle on the last newsletter. That's right. Call out to my smoking hot wife and the head of the No Agenda Voider Club. She's the <laughs> She's best at turning <laughs> you guys out. <laughs> Call outs to Barrett Bangs, Archer Bangs, and Colton Bangs as loyal listeners. A better father would donate in their name, but I'm Baron Dirty Dick Bangs of D.C., and I'm gunning for Viscount. <laughs> He doesn't care. <laughs> Thanks for all you do. I'd like to request karma for all the douchebags who don't donate. Maybe a stranger like myself requesting cool karma fod vibes for total parasitic douchebags and encourage first-time donors to step forward and support. 
<laughs> or at the very least, they now know they're parasitic douchebags. <laughs> Sincerely, barren, dirty <laughs> dick bangs of D.C. You've got karma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good one. What was it? There was some Twitter conversation about this. You know, people, when someone's bitching and moaning about, I can't get paid for podcasting. And, of course, our, our producers go straight into hitting people in the mouth saying, well, you should try the value for value model, which is poorly understood. And I even... Uh, went so far as to say, hey, you know, yes, of course you've discovered that less than 1% of your audience uh, donates. Well, here's what you need to do. First, consider your audience not just a bunch of listeners, but actual producers of the program you're doing. Uh, Second, uh, instead of um, making people chip in at set amounts, just tell them to send you whatever they thought the program was worth to you. And third... You need an outstanding product, of course. The reply that came back was, well, that's rather insulting, saying I didn't jack up the price high enough and I've got a shitty podcast. You, oh, talking you, about taking it the wrong way. Yeah, you cannot, you can't now, explain I will this. Say, I will say, if I was that guy, I would have taken it the same way. Really? Because that is what you said. No, it's ex- it, that is not what I, that is literally no, not what, what I said. That's what you implied. I did not imply that. Well, I'm implying it. Yeah. You know what we say? Yes, to- you have a crappy podcast that nobody cares about because you just wow. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm. Oh. You will. You know uh, what? I'm sorry you took it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yes. Okay. What should have said? I'm sorry you feel that's what I <laughs> meant when you know I was not meaning that. What is the actual term for that type of an apology? It needs a term. It's called a non-apology. Oh. Uh, and I need to add a fourth thing to it, which is you need a Yeti mic, which I think I picked up from you. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, everybody. There's your success to podcasting. A, call your listeners, producers, and treat them as such. B, let them donate whatever they feel the program was worth to you. Three, be an outstanding product. And four, make sure you're using a Yeti mic. Dvorak.org. Slash N-A. Make sure you support us for the next program. It'll be on Thursday. In the meantime, go out and propagate. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. Shut up, slaves. Yes, shut up, slaves. Shut up. Just shut up. You did mention something I'd like to explain expand on which is the idea that there's no set amount that you could have a subscription of some price and you could or make it or we have a lot of gimmicky, <clears throat> well, we, we have uh, yeah we have monthly and but, weekly sure but you should allow people to give what they whatever they want you and I, every time you see the drop down menu which is so tempting because it looks cool oh i could do a drop down yeah. menu and it says and it gives you like 50 20 10 it's like those things you get from the university of california library you know they say it helps help support the library yeah. and then they have these specific amounts what if yeah. i you know once a mountain in between they do always offer that as an option but generally speaking i find it somewhat offensive mm. to, to have these specific amounts I, I mean i like it in certain ways when they're celebrating something but just in general yeah. people should just the value for value thing is, I think I got about five bucks worth out of this show. So I'm going to give them five bucks for this for the show or oh, hell without give them five bucks for every show. And so then it would be like, what, two, four, six, eight, uh, forty dollars a month or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. This, it seems to me that just, hey, what was it worth to you? Our original pitch, which remains the same, is based on time. If you actually spent two and a half, three hours listening to us. What your time is worth something? Was it was it worth something to you? Was it worth like a movie with a date and a drink? Because you know, is movie date and a drink? You're not getting laid, so you know it's low. But that could be that, yeah. that's what it's a worth date to and you. A drink and a movie is expensive. Yeah, could be <laughs> yes. twelve, fifteen bucks yeah, a pop. Yeah, but I said you're, you're not getting more. laid. I said so. You know, and you're not getting laid. You'll get laid listening to this show. <laughs> Ask anybody. Ask it's anyone. In it's report. in the Mueller report. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go on to, uh, oh, 
little uh, San Diego shooting. It's the, it never got much legs. Now, was this the um, the synagogue? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this guy, uh, what's his name? Something. He has he has a middle name with just a T. Now it's not they're not even spelling it out. So he apparently also released a. Um, uh, well, it's called an open letter, but it, it, I don't know why they're saying open. Well, maybe it's because he titled it open letter. But it's pretty much the same kind of manifesto that was dropped on 8chan from the um, from the uh, um, the Christchurch shooter, the Muslim mosque in Christchurch shooter. Yeah, yeah. And the format is very similar with questions and answers. You know, and in fact, uh, the keeper was telling me this morning that, you know, that was, of course, being blamed on Trump somehow because, you know, I don't know, because he, oh, ha- he hates yeah. Jews, obviously. Yeah. Um, even though in this open letter, the guy specifically says uh, in a question answer, like, ah, I, I, screw, here it is, John T. Ernest. Yeah, let me get open it up for you. Uh, an open letter. Yes, let me see. He says this thing about Trump. Let me find it for Are you a Trump? So it. it so, uh, question and answer, and it's by line number. It's very bizarre, the format, but it's pretty much the same as the mosque uh, murderer. Are you a Trump supporter? Answer. You mean that Zionist, Jew-loving, anti-white traitors cocksucker? Don't make me laugh. So, I don't understand how, you know, the guy apparently wrote this, and but still it's Trump's fault. <laughs> But then the the truly biz- made clear in the Mueller report. <laughs> what was truly bizarre? Do you remember what the Christchurch uh, shooter said on his video just before he got out of the car? Not really. Uh, he said, you know, something about PewDiePie. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically said something about PewDiePie. And so this guy. Let me see. He names, uh, he, he lists PewDiePie's real name, which is a Swedish name. Yeah. And he's, I'm looking for it now. I can't, I don't know why. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to censor some words. To the glow N words and J word media reading this. I think it is important for you to know that I did not do this alone. I had the help of a man named Felix Arvid Ulf Kjellenberg. He was kind enough to plan and fund this whole operation, the sly bastard. Apparently, PewDiePie hates Jews as much as Pajits. Who would have known? Make sure to call me a white supremacist, an anti-Semite, or whatever bullshit you spew to spook the normal fags. It doesn't even matter. You've been calling every white person alive those names for decades. They've lost all their meaning. You've socially ostracized every white person. You've made it harder and harder for white people to live a normal life. Blah, 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 blah. So what is this? What, I mean, and, and why is why is this not being discussed in the M5M? I think it's important. It's very similar. And I, I mean, this could all it well, could you're, all are you be a chance that it was written by the same person. Well, the format is the similar, and we've never. And I don't recall seeing a format like this where you say here here's what I, who here's who I am here's why I did it and then doing a question and answer like an ask me anything. I mean, is this just all 8chan bullshit? That's, that, did they put it all together, implying that they might have actually been involved in any of the shooting? You know, and, it, and, and where's the conversation about, okay, so the people doing this, they hate uh, Muslims and Jews. Do they only love Christians? You know, it's, just, it's, it's not even discussed. I don't understand. It was, it was, we, there was a big conversation about... Christchurch, and it was the same type of thing. We didn't have a video, and it was less people killed. But still, well, it's I think bizarre it's because to me. They were under the they were under the people killed limit. Uh, oh, okay. To make it important, right? But they also caught this guy, which is unusual. We're seeing this happening more and more, which yes. is very suspicious. Yes, usually they kill themselves. You know. Anyway, I'm. I just feel like we're completely. You find the whole thing to be sketchy. It's very sketchy because well, what's sketchy is the lack of coverage. What now? Maybe the maybe the media, the M5M, just think it's more important if Muslims get get killed, or maybe it's the number. You're right. Although we haven't seen the same incessant coverage of Sri Lanka, 
But even though the numbers were quite high, you know, three, four times as high as uh, the, the, the mosque in Christchurch. So, I, I, and I don't know, maybe it's just me. No one questions this. Nobody questions it. I had a Sri Lanka clip, actually. Let me see. What did I, I have, have a Sri Lanka clip. Yeah. I have the Sri Lanka update, if you ah, want to put yes, that. Yes, let's do the update. Um, that would be Sri Lanka update. Perfect. New bombs and more deaths as the hunt for terrorists continues in Sri Lanka, a week after hundreds were killed in Easter Sunday bombings. During an overnight raid in a town on the country's east coast, Sri Lankan security forces say 15 people, including six children, were killed. Authorities say suicide bombers detonated explosives following a gunfight with Sri Lankan troops. They recovered an ISIS flag as well as bomb-making materials and detonators. This came just hours after Sri Lanka's president promised a house-to-house search of the entire country. Security forces say the raids will continue. This won't stop, so we won't stop either. We are the army. We are the type of people who protect the country. Yeah, it goes on. Uh, the U.S. State Department has advised all of its uh, non-essential employees in the embassy in Sri Lanka to leave. Uh, so I don't think this is over. I don't think this is just some retaliation against the Notre Dame burning blamed on uh, on uh, an Islamist. There is something else going on. And you know, my assertion was this was... India with a message to Sri Lanka about China. Here's Gordon Chang. They turned a container port in Sri Lanka, the Colombo International Terminal. They docked uh, a submarine and its tender there in uh, September and October 2014, two separate occasions. That's a Chinese-funded port. They've taken over a container port in Sri Lanka because they debt-trapped the government there. Um, That probably will end up being a facility for the Chinese Navy. This is definitely happening. Perhaps the the synagogue, just from a cynical standpoint, a cynical conspiratorial view, perhaps we needed that. Perhaps we need a little synagogue action to distract everyone away from the uh, from the Christians. And it wasn't just all Christians, by the way. It was churches and hotels uh, in Colombo. Major message to the government there. So maybe it was just to shut people up. Like, oh, stop already! This is we know we don't we we want China out of there. They're doing the right thing, scaring them away. So it's the only way to do it. You're focusing way too much on the religious aspect. Let's 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 throw some synagogue action in. I don't know. <laughs> like where you're free forming here. Yeah, but it's you're just on a roll. Well, no one else has any other in, inspirational ideas about this in journalism. Period. I don't find it in the Times. Well, I don't find it. In the- this, where's your source of this so-called journalism that you're looking for and not finding? Where is this? I'm looking at M5M, baby. M five M's no good. Yeah, well, I'm, exactly. That's all you're proven. So I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm floundering over here. <laughs> I like the Chinese angle though, because it's true. It's true. It's true that the Chinese have taken over these ports, and it's like this is not uh, not a good thing. And India doesn't like you know. They, well, they're, they're parking com- submarines. Com- if they're parking submarines there, yeah, yeah that, they don't. No, that's a problem. That was news to me. Yeah, yeah. You start using it as a sub base. Yeah, that's a problem. Well, it's a problem, yeah, because it's a choke point. Yes. That area is one of the many choke points that the Chinese are trying to capture. They get them, they're getting them everywhere they can. And it's part of their yeah. attempt to take over everything. Well, certainly the, the shipping lanes, and but to have a, a military, I mean, I don't know, it, it may just be me, but I find it odd that Djibouti, where we've been launching drones from for five years, is now a major Chinese military base. Who's, How did who, that happen? How did we let I, that happen? I don't know. I don't know who's running the show. It doesn't appear the president is focused on a lot of different things. There was a great moment, though, in Scandinavia uh, of, of epic, uh, epic proportions with Trudeau. And this very different, uh, you know, prime minister, I guess they get different billing, different vibe than, uh, than our presidents. We have, you know, we always got people with, you know, men in black, women in black suits, you know, earpieces running around, talking into their sleeves, you know, bag off, and when you trounce on you. So, Tr- <laughs> so Trudeau was out doing a, a... You should have been at the correspondence dinner with this riff. <laughs> they should, hey, invite me, people. I'll bring you the comedic stylings of Adam Curry in the No Agenda podcast. Go on. Trudeau um, 
I think there's the, I don't know the entire backstory, but they're opening up some dams that are flooded, so they need to overflow, and it puts uh, several uh, or a lot of people in danger of their houses being swept away or washed out. So a lot of volunteers, uh, and hopefully someone from Scandinavia can uh, can set me straight on exactly what's happening. But that's not really the point of the clip or the setup. Uh, so they're sandbagging. They're, 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 uh, you've got tons of volunteers. They're, thro- they're filling up bags with sand to protect these homes and these people from being washed away when they open up these dams, which I think is, um, you know, uh, maybe it's already happened. So it's the, you know, it's the spring thaw. Floods in Quebec, New Brunswick, Ontario. So Trudeau goes there and does a typical, you know, like a little press thing with the with the people who are filling the sandbags, and he's you know taking pictures for 15, 20 minutes. And there's one guy there who is appalled by this because he has not been able to actually volunteer for the past hour because of Trudeau's photo op, and he and he starts yelling at Trudeau. Here's what's interesting: they're really hands on. Not just his little. He didn't have any security that jumped in, but uh, his press agent. This woman turns around and starts walking toward this man, puts her hands on him, like pushing him against his chest. Then Trudeau comes over and while the guy's talking, grabs him by his wrist as he's talking. I've never seen this. It's rude by any standard, but to have a couple of thugs. Well, it's very aggressive and it's and it's kind of shut up slavey. You know, like I'm um, grabbing his wrist. Well, anyway, here's the exchange. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you know how long you've held up people picking up bags? I've been waiting to line down the road for, for 30 minutes while you've been here soaking up the race. Thank you. You know? Excuse me. Excuse me. You're not getting my vote. This is a free country. It's a free country, and I'm trying to speak to him, and he won't even acknowledge me. Sir, thank you. I'm sorry for your challenge. It's not my challenge. I'm a volunteer trying to help someone save their home. Sir, sir, we've been filling sandbags as well. Yeah. And and you know why you're here? Here, yes, while I'm you're here, here nobody sorry. can pick up. I am here while you're because... here, no one can pick I up don't know sand. That, sir. I'm sorry. Well, sir. why don't you make yourself aware? Well, we are going. You know, to, going to I was with a guy sir, who was I'm a staunch today. conservative, sorry, sorry, and sir, he said sir, if you'd sir, actually sir, do work, yes. he'd change his vote I, and I vote here for you. Sorry, what sir. You spend that's sincerity. I just spent half an hour. Can you listen to me, sir? Now that I've listened to you, yeah, I'll listen. Okay. I'm glad to be here with my kids. We just filled sandbags for 15 minutes, which isn't enough. Sorry. All your RCMP and security help people. Up from Sir, getting their I can stuff. understand your frustration around security. I live frustrations with security every day of my life right now. That's something that I, that unfortunately is a reality well, of my life. Time but I'm taken. happy to he- be here. They're about to open to these speak. dams. I'm happy to be here to speak with you, to listen to you, to speak with all speakers, and to point. encourage more Canadians to come out and volunteer. More people are coming and volunteer because I volunteered, but I was in a Thank truck you, for an hour Thank waiting you, while sir, you were here for your with a photo op. I have the most insincere thing well. I've ever seen. No, I'm sorry, sir. That's un- un- unfriendly and unneighborly today. We're here to help. <laughs> so, a couple things. First of all, <laughs> that's unfriendly and unneighborly. I've never heard the term Canades. Is that typical if you're talking about Canadians? Hey, us Canades? Is that is I've that typical? I've never heard that term. I don't know if he was if he just abbreviated or truncated Canadians and came out Canades. Uh, so some of the um, Canades in the well for us now it's definitely Canades from this day on. But my favorite, I like Scandinavian better. Yeah, Canade. Canades. It's, it's got a snotty sound. I'm not sure. If, you know, Canuck. Maybe that's where it comes from. I, but the phrase I like the most is as. As Trudeau is coming over, I'm sorry for your challenge. The hell was that all about? Sir, sir, I'm sorry yeah, for your challenge. That. I'm sorry I for could... your challenge. <laughs> sorry for your challenge. What is this? Are they playing some, some from Game of Thrones or something? I'm no. not getting this. I, I like I it. References. I like it. Sorry for sorry your for your challenge. If when someone's like just yelling at you, look, man, I'm really sorry for your challenge. It's because it can confuse someone and insult them at the same time. So sorry. Definitely confusing. (laughs) Sorry for your challenge. Canades. I don't know. Canades. Never heard of that term. (laughs) Must be me. Well, let's see. I got the San Diego shooting PBS early report on the uh, San Diego shooting, which is not important. Didn't we just play Uh, that? Yeah, it was that the one we played? I thought it was. Yeah, we we just played that. We did. Okay. Wait, you're out of clips, Dvorak? 
I'm getting there. Okay. Well, let's uh, talk about vaccines then. Okay. Um, first, we got a nice note from someone in the industry. Let me pull this up. One of our uh, producers, which we always appreciate, and I was able to put this uh, uh, into the show notes. Actually, let's start with um, Brooklyn from one of our producers. Just thought I'd give you a heads up on how the hysteria is unfolding on the streets here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Now, this is the hysteria that has um, is happening all over the world. We're seeing this with press that we can follow and understand. We're seeing um, measles outbreak outbreaks in the Netherlands. We're seeing them in the UK. <clears throat> no one is calling for a, a global pandemic or anything like that. It just seems that you need to get your booster shot, but it's all localized for some reason. That's it. We're not this. No one's connected the dots, which I find just so disappointing because you know there may be a global outbreak that we're not aware of. <clears throat> So we have uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, which is the center of the Orthodox Jewish enclave that is refusing to vaccinate. Now, you may have heard that uh, Mayor de Blasio mandated that the uh, Orthodox Jews must vaccinate or face fines of $1,000 if they show up in public spaces being unvaccinated, which is, you know, who knows how that'll unpack. Our producer goes on, my workplace is just a few blocks down the street from their main neighborhood, and we received a call tonight from the New York State Health Department informing us that we had a customer last Thursday for an event who tested positive for measles. They requested a list of every employee and customer that was there that night, as well as their phone numbers. Hold on a second before you go on. What do you mean tested positively for measles? I, Where do you get tested for measles? What's the test? I think there's a blood test. Not that I know of. Well, maybe if you just have uh, spots, that's then you you well, show that's it. That's not a test. Then you have measles. Well, this is what I happened. I just find that the phrase "tested positively for measles" to be somewhat weird. May, perhaps it meant they diagnosed someone with measles. It's not the same. It, it, no, I, I agree with you. It implies there was a test. If you look at, uh, let's do a quick uh, Google News search because we don't want to. We want to actually use Google for this, and we'll say tested positive, tested positive for measles. I think you'll see that this is a M five M phrase. Let's go to the news tab. How to Michigan kids tested positive for measles. Um, Mom, no, that's not the L.A. University's quarantine staff students over measles. Several people tested positive for the highly highly contagious measles virus. Uh, kids tested positive for measles. Boston Elementary School student tests positive for measles. So there must be some test. Well, apparently, or either that, or they just like throwing that phrase out. No. Tested positively. What is the okay? Well, let's okay. Now we're stuck here because this is one of those things that gets to me. Okay. Uh, measles, M E A S E L S, test. L E S. Just a simple little search. What is the measles test? Is there one? Uh, diagnosis. Your doctor can usually diagnose measles based on the disease's characteristic rashes. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. If necessary, a blood test can confirm whether the rash is truly measles. So I'm right. Blood test. But you get the blood test if you have the rash. So right. you have measles. Right. So I guess it's so, possible uh, right. to have a rash that's not measles. And so you uh, have a test. I've got it. Thank you. I've got it. Okay. This is an element of the fear campaign. Because where else have you heard tested positive for something? There's only one. AIDS. AIDS, exactly. HIV. So it's yeah. part of the fear campaign, and it's, it's, it's flowing over into the vocabulary. Instead of saying, hey, someone was there, had the measles, or came down with the measles, when you report tested positive, makes it that much more scary. And right. by the way, NBC, ABC, several outlets have all used the doctored stock photo picture of the baby or nurse uh, in uniform or in scrubs holding the baby and the baby is all filled with measles spots 
and it turns out yeah. there's just a stock photo image that someone doctored up and they've all used it. Hey, welcome to the M5M. So the New York State Health Department called us, informing us we had a customer last Thursday for an event who has tested positive for measles. They requested a list of every employee and customer that was there that night, as well as their phone numbers. They provided access to an online portal with information regarding what to do if an employee shows symptoms or is unvaccinated, as well as the Excel sheet they wanted us to fill out and send back. It will automatically add all names and numbers to a database of possibly exposed individuals. (laughs) Of course, I expressed I would like to opt out of this information collection, and I'm waiting to make sure that request is acted upon. I'll update further if anything else develops from this. And, you know, here we have UCLA. Cal State to quarantine students who cannot prove they had measles vaccination. And so if you can't prove that you've had a vaccination, I don't, can't you just be tested and show that you don't test positive for measles? Well, based on everything enough? we've just been rambling you'd about, think, yes, you think that, you'd that think. should work. No, so instead, uh, if you can't prove that you've had your measles shot and your booster. Which nobody can <clears> prove because it's not a piece of documentation that you keep. And you probably don't have the same doctor, especially yeah. if you had the shot a long time ago. You yeah. just have to get another shot. <clears throat> yep. This is just to sell more shots. That's the way it seems to me. I, I you know, measles, uh, everybody, it's the scare. It's the, everyone's so afraid. Tested positively for measles. So here's our, our insider who will be able to help us with the testing positive for measles. Uh, he's the anonymous slave. Enjoying your vaccine uh, best on no agenda after studying the specific field on the clinical side at school. Working with Big Pharma on the marketing side, I consider myself a semi-vaxxer as well. Thought I'd offer some context clarifications. And this is not stuff that we don't necessarily know, but it's good reiterating, I think. Injecting attenuated and or killed virus is one and the oldest vaccine mechanism, the one in the MMR vaccine. Another mechanism to inject parts is to inject parts of the germ so that the immune system can develop antibodies to recognize and fight the germ if infected. At the end of the day, said purposely, all these vaccines rely on the patient's immune system learning to raise antibodies so they can fight off the disease if they come in contact. That's my understanding as well. That memory of the antibodies can be lost as immune cells die Hence, the booster shots. The booster shot requirement does tend to vary by vaccine slash disease. I don't think the industry has established why. Mm -hmm. So a vaccine may legitimately not (laughs) be... Because half of it's water. (laughs) So a vaccine may legitimately not be 100% effective if that immune training doesn't happen effectively. There's no confirmation test done to see that someone actually responded to the antigen. Or in the cases of Gardasil and the yearly flu vaccines, it doesn't address every strain of the disease. And of course, vaccine-resistant strains can always develop and thrive because no one is inoculated against them. Gardasil only inoculates against nine. That was initially four, as you and I remember back in 2006, seven. Uh, So that's nine strains of HPV, uh, which the exalted peer-reviewed literature claims accounts of 90% of the strains that can cause cervical cancers. Uh, With the flu vaccine, they have to guess every year what the dominant strains will be to throw into the vaccine. As you've mentioned in the show, very often they get it wrong. None of all that would be necessary or would be necessarily bad if it were transparent, but it's not. And the effectiveness and the weak severity of many of the diseases is incongruous with the dogma created around the need to get these vaccines. Also, pharma is always looking for ways to diagnose more people with stuff, which makes sense from a marketing perspective. Just look into the creation of pre-diabetes <laughs> and the changing goalposts for diagnosing diabetes. That's true. Pre-diabetes. True. Pre-diabetes, yeah. Pre-cancerous, yeah. pre-diabetes. That's everybody. It's, yeah, we're all, we're all pre diabetes Everybody's got pre-diabetes. Everybody's got pre-cancer. Just, Everyone's got pre-death. You just got to love it. It's fantastic. Um, so the president was asked about uh, the measles uh, outbreak and what should be done. They have to get the shot. The vaccinations are so important. This is really going around now. They have to get their shot. Shut up, slave. Okay. Meanwhile, 
Here's what went on in Coachella, which no one is frightened about. Most people go to Coachella for the music, but some are coming home with a more long-lasting experience. Doctors say herpes cases have skyrocketed at the Coachella Music Festival this year. They report seeing up to 10 times the cases they normally do this year. There have been more than 1,100 cases over the last two weekends of the festival. Now, this is something to be worried about for your kids. Because once you get the herpes, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go away. Well, I'd like to know, the the report is weird because, her. yeah, it doesn't go away. But it's like, what's going on at this? This is a music festival. Oh, hello. I mean, are you (laughs) telling me that everyone's having massive amounts of sex at Coachella? Hey, man, it's herd immunity. Are they having massive amounts of sex at Coachella? That's the implication. What other music festival? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of kissing and hugging and dancing and being stoned, but public is it public sex? They're just having a is it an orgy? No, you know, Coachella, what is going on at this Coachella? Coachella is a uh, it's two weekends. You know, it's a multi multi day thing. So people stay there. They're in tents. They're in hotel rooms, motel rooms, RVs, Airbnbs. Yeah, and just passing around the herpes like there's no tomorrow. Hey, m- memo to you, John. People have sex. I noticed this, but it's like <laughs> this phenomenon is I don't crazy. Think about a, a music festival as a sex festival. Yeah, ever hear of Woodstock? I you you take a look at all the pictures of Woodstock. I saw. I've seen. I don't think I've seen one picture of public sex. <laughs> Maybe it went like this. Hey, man, stop bar goading the herpes. Hand me some herpes. Maybe I don't know. Pay, that you could be could. It doesn't necessarily mean genital herpes. No, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're implying. Yeah, but if you're passing joints around and somebody's got a big sore on their lip, that's herpes. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just got this sore on my lip. I think it's because I've been just, the dope has been burning too hot, man. I'm just gonna show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh yeah, that'd be fab. Yeah, on No Agenda. Hey, man. (laughs) Stop sucking under herpes joint, man. Let's do some donations. So John Knowles starts off our uh, donor listing, uh, the Baron of Murfreesboro. Yes. uh, Where all the techies are. We got to go there. That's where the next meetup should be. It should be. Don't you think? Uh, Hocus uh, Hocus Locus. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, Knowles came in with 113.33, which is the special... Double uh, double sticks and three chicks. Yeah, <laughs> tell us where this uh, double sticks and three chicks came from. Besides, the from the guy, your- the producer suggested it be called that, and I couldn't figure. And I sent him a note back, and I didn't get. A, I didn't see another note returning, but it, I'm sure there is one buried in the email. But I was kept looking. I said, "Well, double sticks is the ones we got. You know, double sticks and the whatever we've done the two ones before is double sticks or sticks. A sack of sticks. sticks. We had a sack of sticks." And I have to say that the three ch- the chicks reference has to be that a three looks like two boobs uh, sideways. So oh, okay. Gotta, now I get it. That's yeah. got to be the reference. It's, okay. Uh, it's kind of misogynistic in a way. It's totally. Okay. But that wasn't my idea. That's how the produ- production of this show works. We've got producers. They they Come produce. the ideas. We give them a run and see what happens. We've got a number of 113.33 donations thanks to him. All right. Focus Locus is another one. Ryan Headum, uh, one one three three three. Wesley Clark, not the Wesley Clark, maybe. <laughs> um, he says, "Oh, but you just give Ryan a." Uh, he's been a douchebag. A bigger donation. Why don't you give him a de douching? You've been de douched. Wesley Clark, uh, Ben in. Bidford, Maine, one one three dot three three. Been a while since he donated. He needs a dedouching. Okay. You've been dedouched. And then we have our last one one three dot three three donation. Right, so there's a number one two three four five six seven. Eh. Uh, not great, but okay. 
Did you, Raphael Figueroa. Did you get in? Did you get Baron Walkman of Buckeye? Oh, Baron Walkman of Buckeye. One one three three three. Sorry, good catch. Raphael Figueroa in Miami, Florida. Same thing. Now we move to Marco Schnepp. Schnepp. Oh God. Schnepp. Schnepp. A hundred dollars. Oh, this is, uh, he was at the meetup. Yeah, thanks to Rolf for organizing the Zurich meetup. Big thanks to you guys for entertaining and informing us and serving as uh, an icebreaker to meet new, open-minded, relaxed citizens. It's true. Love and light. Hey, I'd like, uh, do you have any pictures from the Zurich meetup? I haven't seen any. I'd like to know how, who was there, yeah, how was it? I, I would wonder how many people, if, I just, if you got six, it'd be a miracle. Yeah. Uh, Il Pope... Pope de Kilismo, KG7, KHP. Uh, I can't pronounce this at all. Uh, il Pope de Ciclismo. Oh, il Pope, okay. il Pope, Pope de, de Ciclismo. Ciclismo. Ciclismo, okay. Something. There's some code that he's using. He doesn't want to use his real name in Gold no. Beach, Oregon. Kilo Came Golf 7. Bucks. Kilo Golf 7, Kilo Hotel Papa, 73s. Uh, Roger Colburn, $100. Uh, Sir Sean in Moyoc, North Carolina, $100. It came in as a check, a surprising check. <laughs> Listen, hold on. <laughs> Roger Colburn, who I know is in Austin. He, he wanted to hook up, but I just, I have, I, can't, I have no time while he's here. He says, I'm in town. Do you want to do lunch? I can tell you about how my Tesla blew up and I had to get all my batteries replaced. Sounds like a good story is there. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope we can hook up next time he's in town. Anonymous, 100 to 8008 boobs, Page, Arizona. Uh, <clears throat> this guys, you guys are always taking a risk of going to this anonymous thing at these levels. Thank you, John and Anna, for the best podcast. Uh, shout out to Nick the Rat. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Hog Story and the rest of the No Agenda family. Sir Joel, battle from Battle Bomb Black Baron of North Nevada, Northern Nevada, in Reno, 8008. Uh, Les Smith, 8008. Happy birthday to my hot smoking hot wife, Kim. She's getting, uh, is there a dame? Oh, dame's coming up for her. Not today. Paul Gabrielson, 80. Nathan Carver, $75 from Calgary, Alberta. My name is Nathan, and my cousin, Daniel introduced me to your show, and his greatest fear is that his wife or myself will donate before he does and ask you guys to call him out as a douchebag. Douchebag! <laughs> fear confirmed. <laughs> yeah, you should have been afraid. Tom Miller, 6969. Baron Mark Tanner, 6789. In Whittier. Paul Renum, 5656. Sir Eric VM, Baron of the Valley. 5555, Christopher Walker, De Pere, Wisconsin, 5510, Seth Ralston, 5510. <laughs> he says, clicked on the puppy in the newsletter and I got here. <laughs> was the puppy linked to double nickels on the dime? Uh, it was linked to an open donation, I believe, oh, okay, called nice. a puppy donation. It's a new category. It's called the sad puppy sad donation. Sad puppy, sad pup. Uh, Adam Barrett, 5115, Scott Nelson, 5001 in Melbourne, Florida. And now the following are $50 donors, name and location, if available. It's Robert Fittler in Mars, Pennsylvania. Daniel, <coughs> Danielle Williams. Danielle. S.F. Norlander in Willemstadt, uh, Netherlands. Oh, interesting. No, 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 no. Willemstadt, Netherlands? No, no, no. It doesn't sound right. What he says, Willemstad, Netherlands. That's hmm, it's probably Bonaire or Curacao or something. Hmm. Oh. No, it's okay. okay. Then it could be Netherlands Antilles. Well, could be. Stuart Fawcett, uh, Jeffrey Zellin in Oakland, Michigan, Richard Gardner, Sir Richard. Uh, I think he's, I don't know where he is anymore. Darren Den- Denizuski in Dubai, Arab Emirates. And uh, Peter Totes in Sugarland, Texas. Eric Dutro in Flint, Michigan. Maxine Waters Gravel. <laughs> that thing is still there, man. The gravel. Still do- he, the gravel. He, it, it is still donating. And finally, the Rogson family in Los Angeles, California. I want to thank all these people for contributing to show uh, 1133, thir- 11, Two Lucky Numbers. 
and he's um, keeps the show going. Yes. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Maxine Waters Gravel requesting First Communion karma from our youngest gravel in training. <laughs> okay. And uh, for Adam Barrett, uh, he wanted to add fellow producer and smoking hot up- upholder of the law, Amanda, to the birthday list. So uh, we'll do both of those. And thank you for uh, showing up and participating in our grand experiment, uh, 11 years and 1133 episode strong it is your show you produce it which means you're responsible for everything you guys do fantastic this is a great example of it we appreciate all of the financial support also from people who came in under 50 dollars. that is how you can always be assured of anonymity since we just don't read anything under that level but we do have a lot of 33s 11s 12s all of the programs the different subscriptions which help out tremendously please <laughs> support us for our next program which will be on the other Thursday, and you can do that at Dvorak.org slash N-A. Karma's as requested. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You've got karma. Here's our list for today. We're nearing the end of the month, 28th of April, 2019. Les Smith says happy birthday to his smoking hot wife, Kim. She'll be 50-ish, or she was 50-ish on April 20th, so it's a bladed happy birthday. Adam Barrett to the smoking hot upholder of law, Amanda, who's celebrating, and Chris Bryant to his smoking hot girlfriend, Miranda. She turned 36 yesterday. Happy birthday from everybody here at the best podcast in the universe. <laughs> We have one upgrade for today. Uh, we read his note diligently. Sir Scott Baron of the Bikes uh, has upgraded his status to that of Earl, and that is due to another $1,000 in support of the No Agenda podcast, the best podcast in the universe. Thank you very much, Sir Scott. That is highly appreciated. And we do have one knighting today, Todd Moss. Let me get my, uh, let me see, where did I put it here? It's a new studio. Oh, here it is. Wait, 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 wait a second. I, I keep my thing. It get, wasn't he. Uh, was it? Was it Sir Scott that get got this new crazy title, Secretary of Con- Counter Tourism? Uh, well, it's not on my list that way. Let me go back and take a look. We want to make sure we do that right. Yeah, Baron of the gonna... Bikes, a nominee for the Secretary of Counter Tourism. Let me do that. Thank you. Let me just put that in there properly here. Do a little cut and paste work on the fly. It's not easy. It's not easy doing the best podcast in the universe. Well, in fact, that exact uh, commentary was mentioned in the Mueller report. (laughs) So grab your blade. (laughs) Do you have it? Yeah, right here. Okay, perfect. Todd Moss, come on up. Step up to the podium right here next to the lecture. And you see everyone seated and ready to go. Oh, they're standing up for you. There you go. It's the No Agenda Roundtable over knights and dames. And due to your support of the program and the amount of $1,000 or more, you are hereby proudly pronounced Sir Todd Moss, Knight of All High Altitude Aluminium Tubing. And with that, you get a seat at the table and your choice of hookers and blow, rent boys and chardonnay, waifus and waffles, bourbon and bong ribs, onion rings and ice cream, fish pie and fellatio, uh, harlots and houndall, redheads and rise, beers and blunts, geishas and sake, vodka, vanilla, bong hits and bourbon, ginger ale and gerbils, and of course, mutton and mead, all the knights and dames. Love it. Head over to noagendanation.com slash rings. Uh, hand off all your information, your personal details to Eric the Shill, who keep it confidential, but will also send out to you your official No Agenda Signet ring, your sealing wax, your certificate, and we expect you to uh, put that on the social med so we can take a look at it. Be proud and, uh, and thank everybody, including you, for your courage. It's highly appreciated. Then we have a couple meetups to mention. We already talked about the uh, the Zurich meetup, so now we're moving into May. May 2nd, we have a Seattle-Washington meetup. May 4th, Baltimore, Maryland. May 5th, Brussels in Belgium, seat of the EU government, at least part of the time. May 18th, Cincinnati, Ohio. The 25th of May, Eastern North Carolina. Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania on the 25th as well. Then we have June 6th. Looks like doing, they're doing one a month. Another Seattle-Washington meetup. And June 8th, Oklahoma City, I am going to, I believe Oklahoma, but I'm not sure. I got to check that out. You can check it out yourself by going to noagendameetups.com. Sorry. 
I don't think Oklahoma City's there's any other one except that one. And why did I say that then? I don't know. That's the geography. I'm myself. Oh, I'm thinking of Kansas City, which can be multiple places. Well, it's the same giant metro giant, area. Yes, it is the giant metro area. With a line in between. I wanted to uh, uh, congratulate uh, the producer who put together noagendaplayer.com. Not only is it a fantastic way to participate with the group in annotating the shows, which is working out extremely well. It's just beautiful. It's a great place to share links to the show. And I think he set a trend, which is really important. Um, Marco, uh, who, who does the Overcast app, has now I- included, and no coincidence he's doing this when all these other bullcrap closed apps coming out. You know, you can only get Trevor Noah over there. Um, he has a a share a clip in the app now, which is, I mean, how long have we waited for this? I mean, we have our own version of it online, but now apparently in the Overcast app, you can uh, select the beginning and ending and just send a little audio clip to your friends. That's a great, um, a great feature for him. And I think it's great for podcasting too. So make sure you get that and use it a lot and use the no agenda player. It's a great way to propagate the formula. Um, since I've been I have a, I, I, I got a clip I want to get out of the way. Uh, which is, is it about podcasting? Is it about podcasting? Is it about, is it about podcasting? No. Do no. you want a clip about podcasting? Uh, well, I had a, I was going to just finalize it with a clip about podcasting. Oh, okay. Well, now, f- f- finish this. Finish because this off. because there's been a lot of talk lately about what is a podcast. It's, it's I'm <clears throat> clearly outlined in the Mueller report. I know, but people still don't understand what a podcast is. And I thought maybe we could go to the man who knows everything about what a podcast actually is and who has standing in the area by knowing what it's not. Yes, that's right. Here to tell you about what a podcast actually is, is the one and only Rush Limbaugh. You know what podcasts are, by the way? Well, I mean, I know you know what they are. <laughs> But, I mean, do you know what podcasts are supposed to be? They are supposed to be talk shows for people who cannot make it in talk radio. There you go, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. That is, in a nutshell, that is what a podcast is. Thank you very much, Rush. (laughs) What a bigoted comment that was. (laughs) Yes, I like to say has a whole minute of this. The guy is making $400 million in his contract. (laughs) And he is, he has the nerve to, this is like the time when he used to rant years and years and years ago. He used to rant and rave about drug addicts and how they should just be thrown in jail and throw the key away. Meanwhile, he was hooked on Oxy. It was a few years later, he got hooked on Oxy. Right. And he, to the point where he was, could have been thrown in jail himself. No, really? Yo, he was really. Was he traffic? Was he traffic? made him deaf. This is what made him deaf. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he shut up about that idea about just going to throwing the key away. I've heard him because uh, you know I've been driving around a lot in the car, much more than I used to, because we're now on the frontier, and uh, so, you know it's pretty much all you can get here on talk radio wise, uh, NPR or Russian Hannity, and you know uh, whatever else is local here. Um, but he sometimes goes to a commercial break and actually says. I'll be right back after this obscenely profitable commercial break. The guy, he just doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he says stuff like that. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, but it's true. It's true. We it's are true. losers who can't get a radio show, and that's why we invented the podcast. That's exactly right. Thank you, Rush, for clearing that up. All right, over uh, to you. Okay, so Bernie's got a new senior advisor she's considered the national press secretary for a democratic this woman simone 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 Wait, is, she, is she is she back she was she was bernie's uh she was wasn't she bernie's uh left the campaign and she, yeah she was she came back. And she, then she went on off uh, on her own and she started bitching and moaning about the old white people and she was <laughs> so somebody made a collection of some of her commentary about old white she, guys <laughs> yeah, bitching and moaning, we don't need – what she's saying is everything she says in these clips is we don't need Bernie. 
but she <laughs> jumps at the chance to get a paying gig. But listen to this. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party is diverse and it should be reflected as so in our leadership and throughout the, the staff at the top and the highest levels. What do you say to the people who are who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh, my goodness. Poor Trump. white people. Please. Oh, my. Stop. The folks <laughs> calling for civility might need to check their privilege. <laughs> I thought she was running for I thought she was running Mayor Pete's campaign. Yeah, she's apparently back at Bernie. Huh. Isn't her name Robin Sanders? I want to Sim- say Simone. Oh, Sim- Simone, Simone, Simone Sanders. S Y M O N E. Oh, why do I think that she was running someone else's campaign? Hmm. No, well, no, no. You're right. You're right. Well. She's 25. She's 25. Yeah. No, no, no. That was August. That's, that's 2015. That's no, no. That's her. But that's her four years ago. She's, she's 29 yeah, she's, now. She's 29. She looks older, but she's 29. Oh, she's got all that <laughs> earmark. She's got all the millennial crap. Yeah. yeah. Dishes out. Here's oh, another one that, that's got everybody upset. This is an old clip. Mm-hmm. Those are old clips of her. This is an old clip of Biden going on and on about uh, the state. Uh, yeah, he, he had the opportunity after, I think it was, I think it was a, um, Bush State of the Union speech uh-huh. where he got to do the counter speech at the end. Right. And it's all about drug enforcement. Right. That's when uh, we started throwing black people in jail for smoking weed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well we were throwing them in jail. For no, no, no. For this was the legis- this was the legislation that Biden was like, throw them in jail. These horrible people. The, the, uh, yeah. This is this is going to come back to haunt him. Now I'm going to well, point yeah. out something. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, here he is making these points after another, after a presidential State of the Union. Now, I'm going to point out some specific things, six of them, that we find inadequate about the president's plan. I think the president has to join us in making a significantly greater commitment to these six areas to stem the rising tide of violence in America. And that's what it is, violence. First, we have to join together to ensure that drug dealers are punished swiftly, surely, and severely. In line with what the president is calling for, we have to hold every drug user accountable. Because if there were no uh, no drug users, there would be no appetite for drugs, and there'd be no market for them. What? Let's take a look at what the real problem is. It's not just how many people are using drugs. As the president said, the number of people using drugs, cocaine in particular, is down in our country. That's true. <laughs> but the violence... Did he say that's true? Did you say that? No. He said that's, that's true. In the clip. That's beautiful. Using drugs, as the president said, the number of people using drugs, cocaine in particular, is down in our country. That's true. <laughs> but the violence associated with drugs is spewing out all over America. And that's terrible. I know it's hard to believe, but this very day, violent drug offenders will commit more than 100,000 crimes on this day alone. And the sad part is it that we have we have no more police in the what? streets of our major cities than we had 10 years ago. That's true. And what the president proposes won't help much. What he proposes is no increase over what the Congress has already approved last year. In a nutshell, the president's plan doesn't include enough police officers to catch the violent thugs, not enough prosecutors to convict them, not enough judges to sentence them, and not enough prison cells to put them away for a long time. That's why right now, six out of every ten criminals who are arrested on drug charges have their cases dropped. Yeah. That's why we think the president should triple, triple the commitment that he's made tonight for police, prosecutors, and judges for our cities and our states. Yeah. And that's how we got everyone, three million people in jail. Yeah, and build thanks, more Joe. prisons was his other message. Yeah, thanks, now, Joe. It's true. It's- uh, but he said... There's 100,000 crimes a day <laughs> related to drugs every day. Sure. If you're smoking a joint where it's, where it's illegal, that's a crime. That's not what he's implying. No. This, this number is ridiculous. Hmm, but it's, this is a very old clip. So do you think people very are going to come around to that? I don't think so. I'd like to depress you with something else, though, if that's okay. Yes, you can depress me with something else. Thank you. I've been tracking um, 
the transification of young children for several years now. In fact, um, I've purchased several books on the on the topic that parents use and are uh, recommended to read if they uh, if they have a trans child. And most of it's not about the psychological or physiological uh, issues. It's more about um, the political issues and uh, um, cultural issues, which is very interesting that that's what's focused on a lot of these books. And someone sent me a YouTube video of a gentleman named Walt Heyer. And Walt, very early on, and Walt is now in his, I think he's almost 60. Um, when he was, I think, four or six, it's in, this, it's in the introduction clip. Um, he was uh, affirmed by his grandmother as uh, being transgendered and eventually went through uh, gender reassignment surgery and then transitioned back and is now um, a... Uh, I guess a, a spokesperson for people who want to transition back uh, to what to, to wh- whence they came from, uh, but also talks about what it really means and how you get into the situation and is it uh, physiological, is it psychological? And it was fascinating. A uh, couple, of, I just pulled a couple of clips from this, reasonably short each of them, because you never hear about this. You hear about, um, I mean, we we're, we see the. The trans child who's um, you know on TV shows doing kind of a tra- you know a like a, a drag a, show. A drag show. Thank you. You know, and and that's celebrated. And I I know people who are trans, and I think that there's you you do whatever you want, and it may be perfect for you. But when it comes to children, you know, you've got to question the parents' role, society's role, physician's role, etc. And so Walt Heyer is someone who has a different opinion. And since you'll never hear about this anywhere else, I figured I should bring it to the No Agenda show. Here's a little intro about uh, Walt's background. I I lived eight years as a female named Laura Jensen after undergoing gender reassignment surgery in April of 1983. I started as a four-year-old kid in 1944. So I'm bringing to this conversation today 74 years of firsthand experience in some way, either living it or trying to deal with it or trying to recover from it. Um, And um, it's important, I think, to understand that everything that we've heard today is damaging to children. And I was damaged by this, and I have some very strong points of view. So as I said, it was his grandmother who noticed uh, uh, that he wanted to be something different when he was very young, four, and she put him into a purple dress, and that's where it all started for Walt. I think it's important for us to realize that there is actually nothing good about affirming a young boy, four years old, like my grandma did me. The moment you affirm a child like my grandma did, putting me in a purple chiffon dress and telling me how cute I was, how wonderful I looked, is at the very same moment that you're affirming that young person, you're telling them there's something wrong with them, that you're not right. That is child abuse. We need to begin calling it what it is. It's not affirming a child. It's causing them to be depressed and anxious about who they are. And then we go on to inject hormone blockers into them and begin altering their body. Can we begin to understand today from these discussions how destructive this is to the psyche it's no wonder they end up with separation anxiety and bipolar disorder dissociative disorders schizophrenia and many other disorders that they want you to ignore they want to block any child from having access to psychotherapy and so he goes into this in some detail about the industry which you and i have discussed really pushing parents and children away from looking at this from a uh, psychiatrist or a psychiatric perspective. Like, no, no, whatever you do, you don't want that. Here's the solution. By the way, it's interesting to see the troll room, but how people cannot uh, take this topic maturely. It's really, it's, it's quite pathetic. 
Uh, anyway, it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's quite, quite pathetic. But uh, the uh, what uh, Walt Heyer is saying here is that we are manufacturing a large percentage of these children to be trans. We I are think the manufacturing. The Catherine Heigl situation is, I'm, is uh, I'm sorry? an example of that. Uh, say again, I'm sorry? Well, Catherine Heigl and her kid who, yes, yeah, th- who I, says, I'm a girl when he was three years old, not, you know, he's just, a, his brain's not even working fully functioning. And so, oh, okay. And she just goes with it. Oh, I mean, this is like not parenting. This is exactly where this converse, where this story goes. We are manufacturing transgender kids. We are manufacturing their depression, their anxiety, and it's turned into a huge industry that people are profiting from after kids' lives are completely torn apart. The most vulnerable people in our society and adults are tearing their lives apart. It's really beyond my understanding why we're even having this discussion, because it shouldn't be happening. We won't see the consequences of what they're doing today until 10 or 15 years later. And there'll be somebody else speaking up like I am, saying, it was horrible what they did to me. So you were thinking of Charlize Theron. Um, we got the wrong first name. Charlize Theron. Th- he, this next clip is only two what did more. I say Charlene. Yeah, something like that. Charlize yeah. Theron, who is in the, in the media now, saying, "Hey, my my three year old said uh, I'm not a boy." Okay, so you're not. This is called affirmation, and here's what Walt says about it. A parent can actually cause a kid to be gender dysphoric by affirming them. The APA, which an article is going to come out in the Daily Signal in the next couple of days that I just finished last night, the APA in their handbook in 2014 says kids are not born transgender. And yet we're treating them with medical treatment as if they were and trying to alter them. They're not born that way. I want to say it again. We're manufacturing transgender kids. You know, I'm the fortunate one. I got sober. I'm 33 years sober. I drank heavily and use cocaine as a way to try to mask the pain from having undergone the surgery, as a way to cope with what grandma did in a purple dress that confused me, that when I was a little boy, four or five and six years old, I I began to want to be affirmed. I began to enjoy being affirmed. I became addicted to the affirmation and the attention. I mean, if a kid wants to steal All of the attention out of the room, all they have to do is say, I am a transgender. They can suck the life out of a room in a heartbeat. And the focus is right on them. And they can get anything they want, can't they? Nobody calls them out. Nobody says, how do you, how'd you come to this conclusion? Well, we know how they came to the conclusion. Schools are giving them books. They're indoctrinating them. Parents are encouraging them. Online, they're in chat rooms suggesting Groups of kids become transgender. It's so, a fad. Yeah, so there's your uh, fad. There's your manufacturing. And there's a fad involved in with some of these kids. Sure, no doubt about sure, it. sure, sure. Final clip, sure, sure. It, and it's very obvious. I can't believe this is not discussed more often uh, because it certainly comes up with weight gain and obesity. <clears throat> and while uh, there is an actual condition. Um, autogynophilia, which, you know, there are some people who really, really are in the wrong body. Um, the, the cause of a lot of uh, children to say, I don't want to be a boy, I don't want to be a girl, might be more obvious than you think. Yes, there are people who are autogynophilia, but there's also people who are deeply troubled. Over 50% of the people that I've worked with, hundreds of people that I've worked with over the last 10 years, were sexually abused. Boys who are abused at a young age come to the conclusion that the only way they can prevent themselves from being sexually abused again is to cut off their genitalia and become females. In their mind, that is their defense mechanism for sexual abuse. Girls who are sexually abused want to be men as a way to fend off any intruder or sexual abuser because they will no longer be attractive for sexual abuse. Whether it's men or women, vast majority of them were abused as children. Many of them I sit with and talk with privately are in their 30s, 
40s and 50s before they're ever able for the first time to disclose they were sexually abused. It's too painful. I was sexually abused at nine years old, multiple times, by my uncle. When I told my parents I was sexually abused, they said, oh, Uncle Fred wouldn't do that. Wrong. They said I was a liar. So now I had worn a purple dress as a four-year-old. I had been sexually abused, and now I'm a liar. You know, it's not a real good way to start off life, and you're not only nine years old yet. It seems so obvious. Jeez. It does. Well, I, I told you I was going to depress you, but I, I'm so happy that the, this this guy's speaking out because, you know, people get caught up in the moment. <clears throat> when I see that on television, you know, they get caught up. Like, oh, the kid's cute. There's lots of affirmation going on. You know, there's lot. Maybe you need to just make sure Uncle Frank is uh, not around. In addition, again, not condemning anything. I have no problem with people changing anything about them themselves for any reason. But I thought this was an eye opener. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you're just witnessing it. It's with the, the Sharon, or Theron woman. Charlize. Like, yeah. Charlize. Yeah, Charlize Theron. <clears throat> yeah. You, you said know, Catherine the- Hagel. Does she, does she have a, a trans child? Oh, I, wasn't it Catherine <clears throat> Hagel that had it? No, it was uh, Charlize Theron. With, with Charlize the cr- Stone? Charlize Theron. Oh, so it's not that like you said Shirley Stone. No, Shirley right. Theron. The one with oh, the... I thought it was Catherine Hagel. No. Well, that's the mistake I made. Well, and they may be the same person. Do they have the, <laughs> do they have the crazy eyebrows that go up? <laughs> it, it's a possibility, those two. Well, I, I'll, I'll check in my details. And my, I'm sure the chat room should have corrected me. But <laughs> Chat room did correct you. They did correct you. Oh. Troll room. There's, that's a different story. All right. You got anything else to take us out of the depression so we can go home and uh, and be happy about life, or are we just going to leave it at this? Oh, well, no. If we're going to do this, you might as well pay my 40-second second clip of Abby Disney bitching and moaning about the the wages wages that people are making. They're too high. Disney heiress Abigail Disney is speaking out against wage inequality, calling Disney CEO Bob Iger's salary, quote, insane. In an op-ed for The Washington Post published Tuesday, headlined, it's time to call out Disney and anyone else rich off their workers' backs. Abigail Disney wrote, quote, Iger took home more than $65 million in 2018. That's 1,424 times the median and pay of a Disney worker. At the pay levels we're talking about, an executive giving up half his bonus has zero effect on his quality of life. For the people at the bottom, it could mean a ticket out of poverty or debt. It could offer access to decent health care or an education for a child, unquote. Is she giving all her money away? This Disney heiress? Is she going to pony up? What's going to happen? She did a museum over here in San Francisco. It's pretty cool. Uh, I just think it's interesting how they start to turn on each other. <laughs> like the Murdochs, the Disneys. Yeah, they all they all get into that. Yeah. We'll see something happening with, I'm sure, uh, the Jobs uh, uh, widow. Oh, yes. Powell. Powell. Lauren. Lauren Powell. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to end it here then, John. All right. That's good. good. All right. Um, Have a great Sunday, everybody. We will return on the other Thursday for a continuation of all the media deconstruction that you can possibly consume. We've got it here for you. And we do it twice a week. And we'd like you to support us by going to Dvorak.org slash NA. And that helps tremendously. And coming to you from the studio that is so much off the grid, it doesn't even have a mailbox or an address. On the frontier of Austin, Texas, FEMA region number six on the governmental maps in the Drone Star State. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where I don't know why it's so cold, I'm John C. Dvorak. (laughs) Uh, It's global warming, my friends. Certainly you know that by now. We return on Thursday right here on No Agenda. Please, again, remember us and support us at Dvorak.org. Until Thursday, adios, mofos, and such... Ah, yes. Special thanks to Jesse Coy Nelson, Red Means Recording, and UK PMX for our end of show mixes. Don't.
donate to a no agenda. They give us shows week after week. Donate to a no agenda. It's a show that's really unique. Donate to a no agenda. Listen to John and Adam speak. Donate to a no agenda. Science is turning into a clique. Oh, wise guru, I have traveled so far to find out the meaning of ass cream with bear fillings for the Knights of the Round Table. In the year 639, such were the delicacies of the world, my son. Bear fillings? I heard ass cream. Ice cream with bear fillings. <laughs> ass cream with, ass ass cream with ass bear fillings. <laughs> Legal sanctions may affect cheeseburgers and royal cheeseburgers, filet of fish, chicken burgers, ice cream with bear fillings, and milkshakes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you hear that? It's pronounced ass cream. Oh, ass cream. That's bear meat cooked in blueberry bear fat. Oh, my God. That's good. Bear fillings. I heard ass cream. Ice cream with bear fillings. <laughs> it's pronounced ass cream. Oh, ass cream. Ass cream with, ass cream with, ass cream with ass bear <laughs> fillings. <laughs> that's bear meat. Cooked in blueberry bear fat. Oh my god, that's good. In the year 639, such were the delicacies of the world, my son. Before we even get started, you know I gotta put the cans on. <laughs> Hi friends, in Planet Earth dating, it's Sunday. In the Lynn life and the Jamie body mind, the intrusions from above continue. That's true. Tax. 
info. Dvorak.org slash N-A. Look, here's the deal.